pings and all that stuff. Oh God, so much I gotta, so much I gotta do. Hey, oh. hey, over. Hey, oh, hang on. Hi. Right. Hey. Okay, you're you're there live on twitch.tv oh. forward slash Chasmic. Oh, he's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> uh -oh. I promised. I, I, I promised O Dog. We have to have O Dog. Well, we did hear a second of him, so you know, we, we gotta, mean, you're we not alive. We got a brief O Dog moment. Oh. Hi. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hey, hey, you yeah? Near you. Lovely stuff. Sorry. Look, feeling a bit technical <laughs> difficulties, you know, does. It's all good, man. I'm glad that Joe informed um, me he's eating chicken nuggets. Great choice. Uh, yeah, stream looks good. Uh, Dom, awesome. Yeah, looks, looks alright. I mean, the thing I'm most worried about is uh, audio balance because uh, I don't know how I do it, but like every month or so, I accidentally change my microphone value and it just skews everything out of proportion. Gotcha. So it probably sound. I'm just changing how it sounds. The unknown podcast the is mind. not happening. I wanted to get the Hive Mind podcast up at 4 o'clock, which is two hours from now, but uploading is going to take two hours and 20 minutes. Looks like I'm not going to hit it. Alone. Damn, that is rough. Unlucky. Unfortunate. <laughs> oh, yeah, there'll be, there'll be some background noise from my microphone, but uh, not much I can fix about that. I can just tweak my voice down a tiny bit. My Photoshop file, which I used for the thumbnails for the hive mind, also got corrupted on my external hard drive, so I'm gonna oh, need to like recreate that. Yeah, my external hard drive is a nightmare. I, I don't wanna get into it, but it is it just decides to corrupt files when it feels like it basically. Oh that's it, it, it corrupted my entire hive mind assets folder. Oh god. So luckily it didn't corrupt the Photoshop file for that. So I was able to recreate all the assets pretty much, but does not sound ideal for a hard drive oh, to do no. that. No. Uh, and I've, like, formatted it, like, three times trying to, like, make it work right, and it just hasn't, so... Oh, God. Sounds like, like it's about time to invest in a new one. Oh, this is already the new one. Oh, great. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I, I mean, relatively speaking, it's, like, a year old at this point, maybe. But... Um... I had a few. I think it was something with my old laptop. When I think one of the USB ports on the side of the laptop was fucked. Um, but now that I have a new laptop, I'm hoping the issue goes away. But if it doesn't, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's rough. Mm. Also, another warning I'll give at the start of this. Uh, Katie's in another room and another voice call. So if she gets like at all heated, you might hear her on the microphone gotcha. <laughs> she might pop up on the stream like very faintly and briefly in the background good dinner good dinner. <laughs> she can't fucking contain herself i don't know what that sound is yeah he's kind of vanished it's all good I mean, we can grab someone else, but I would kind of love someone who got three of the top four, four and four of them to be here for this. It would be quite nice. It was uh, quite relevant in this year's list, so. Oh, hey, Phantom's responding to me. Oh, well, let's go. Yeah. Uh, he said, hey, can you give me 15 minutes? Ah, right, that's not bad. Yeah. Not bad. We can I have that. to get these chores done. Yeah. All right. I'm just here to listen for a bit while I'm eating, okay. but uh, I just wanted to say welcome to the Pathfinder podcast featuring Phantom Wait, Cloud. Wait, hold on a minute. Welcome, welcome. Wait, hold on. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. I don't think you're allowed to do this. <laughs> you're allowed to seize the things like this. Er, Brink, you see, the thing is, you're suggesting a 15-minute RR roundup. What part of the group of people do you that we have here do you think is capable of doing an rr roundup i can talk about rounds that i've played <laughs> that's the best i can do as well i mean i, I did just upload like a streak of three rounds in a row back to back actually wait i can't even do that did, did episode <laughs> four of desire come out yet 
Yes, it did. It came out five minutes ago. Very cool. Uh, don't spoil. It's only been five minutes. You can't even watch a full twenty minutes in five minutes. Unless it's not you, even a twenty minute video because I hoe it on my episodes. Unless you, unless you just skipped the fights. <laughs> just oh, uh, just I just see stone skip skip. I, if you look at the thumbnail of the video, you will see that there is actually a bow pointed at some other players in the thumbnail. Spoilers, wow. Oh, spoils. Go off um. my content so I can earn zero cents in money. <laughs> That's I'm the desperate. dream. I'm desperate, bro. Dream right there. Um, Dom, I don't know if it would be too much work, but... It'd be kind of neat if you put the uh, Discord call like icons on the screen, just uh, to make like, it easier to differentiate between voices. I think I have but, a. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can figure this one out. Like, I, not necessary, but I just thought about it. Yeah, the, pro the problem I, I I'll give it a shot, but the main problem I have is my OBS doesn't really recognize the D Discord as a uh, as a uh, like a window or that anything so i i have done it in the past however um i, I have done it in the past however i had to do was my whole monitor and just have discord sitting on there for two hours yeah that that seems yeah that's what I, that's what i do with the uh, hive mind radio podcast but uh, it's, it's it's not fun yeah it's not ideal luckily i have a dual monitor set up so i can make it tolerable probably. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to avoid having just one monitor just taken up entirely by Discord for two hours. It's not fun. Not useful. Yeah, especially when we're talking about a huge list and a doc that you might have to review yeah. while yeah, talking I, about it. I'll definitely have to be visiting that a lot because my memory is hazy. Well, thankfully, I have. To, I do have some fancy things going on here, so it should be all, all be good. Excellent. Oh. No, I I do not have three monitors. I'm sorry, Key. Um, I mean, I, I could. I do have a, a spare monitor lying around. However, it is like a 2000s, like a mid-2000s square Dell monitor um, that I don't even know if it's... I don't even know if it's seen HD in its entire life. So... It'll <laughs> look dreadful. I don't even I don't even have room on my desk to plug it in. Alright chat, I got a question for you while we wait here. Oh no. Uh imagine since you're here to listen to a podcast about intros. I imagine you see the All Stars Five intro. I wanna know what is your favorite team sequence from All Stars Five? Go. Well, that's a cool question, actually. If it's not me shooting a chicken nugget with a flame bow, you're <laughs> wrong. <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm trying to think of mine, actually. I really dig the Pathfinder one because Phenom made an original map with, like, landmarks. That's just, like, an attention to detail that just blew me away. I'm just quickly rewatching the intro so I can remind myself of all of them. Oh yeah, coolest. Yeah, that's a really memorable moment, Key. Yeah, I like that. Coolest one. is great. He come out the head. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the desire train. Nice. While we're on the topic, I think it's interesting that I played for a different team in all three of my. Uh... All star seasons that I played. <laughs> Pretty awesome. What's happened? What do you guys know? Joke. You, you're, a, you're a little laggy, oh dog. I'll just speak mate so quick. Uh, Actually, wait, no, I'm, 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 I'm wrong about that. Yeah, I'm a little, wrong about that. little stuttery. I'm checking my RR stats doc. I actually played for Hilton Quiver twice in All-Stars. Uh, I don't really know how much I can do about Oh, no. You can't, like, restart your router or can do about. the maps or anything? Uh, no, I don't really know if it's 
mind shit these days. At uh, point with my family quite quickly, but apparently there's nothing wrong with it. So hmm. yeah, uh, I it can up to connect my computer to oh, my girlfriend's phone. That's about the best I can do. Hmm. See so, if yeah. picks a day. Yeah, I can not all of you who in the account. I'm rooting for I'm rooting for you, dog. We gotta make sure you're on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> right now, first in not like a full sentence that's coming through already. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're picking up little bits and pieces. Yeah, small bits and pieces for sure. Uh, so, Jake, since you play a few All Star seasons yeah. now, which is your favorite of the ones you've played? Uh, definitely uh, season five. I did not have great experiences in the other two seasons, in all honesty. So, nice. Uh, se- season two, I got. I don't. That was the season where I died to Nestor. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I just got pearled on and died or something dumb like that. And uh, season three, I think I don't even remember what happened in season three just a blur in your mind See, season 5 was fun even though I died in episode 3 it was, I just like, I just had a fun time that's all there is to it yeah. I think but in general all stars was not like a round that ever uh, went too well for me <laughs> I think uh, I think 4 was, we were still quite laggy although there is a round that uh um... I, I feel like it's pretty well known at this point that there's one round that I've played in that I have had historically unbelievably bad luck in. Hmm. And that's... Uh, Evil Revolution. Oh. Wait, wait, hold uh, on. Oh, dog, speak again? Yeah. Hello. I think you hey. sound a little better. I think that sounds better, yeah. Okay, sweet. All right, cool, cool, cool. We got Odo. So my back. question, my question before was, um, what what intros are you planning on bringing to the table outside of the top ten? Like, did you did you did anyone make any notes of ones they wanted to talk about? I have a few. Yeah. Uh, I I think I have like two. Well, I have. Were I you like... looking to keep those a secret until you bring them up, or did you want to say now? Uh... I don't really care. I can do we, either. I think, we'll probably just wait until we get to the that section. Because yeah. one thing I've always okay, I wor- was, I've, I've worried about the, in, in, that's happened in the past with podcast sessions is we just start talking about things out like that that should be on the podcast yeah. but it's like not the podcast. I'm also being summoned away for a second, so. Uh, Alrighty. I'm more meant so I can like make any personal notes point. while we're waiting for Venom than to actually have the conversation off. Venom should be here I soon, should... by the way. Yeah, should be not too long. Um, I should be done soon, but if Venom isn't here by the time I'm here, you can just start. I don't mind. I should be done soon, though. Alrighty. Alright. Wait, right, in the All-Stars talk, I think my, my favorite one I played was All-Stars 4. Oh, there is Venom. <gasps> hey! Sorry. Hi, hi. No, I, I did it no, I... Hello, hello. Welcome. Thank you. Has the podcast started yet? No, no, no. We haven't, we haven't got any things just yet. Okay. We've just been chatting about just stupid shit for now. All good. Oh. But outside of that, is everyone happy with all the topics? No, no, what's going on? Any no confusions? No. Yeah, that uh, looks good to me. Let me look at them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, it's all good. Okay, yeah, that sounds that seems good. Cool. Nice. Alright, I know that um How is everyone's how is everyone's lockdowns? Are we all oh, well I don't even know if everyone's in lockdown. Are we coping well? Eh <laughs> <laughs> Just eh. Eh. Yeah, I think eh. we've gone we've gone back into the the deep end with Scotland too, so oh. Which is oh. which is very tragic, because... uh I'm about 
three months overdue a haircut. Uh, and then all the oh. hair all the hairdressers around me are now closed. So I look dreadful. I look so awful. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine mine's getting not mine's getting that way as well. It's nearly getting to the point the dire like the dire worst case scenario that Katie might have to cut my hair. Oh I'm sure that'll be go fine. And I am <laughs> dreading that immensely. Yeah, I don't blame you. The thing is, though, the fact that for good haircut goes down because there's kind of an unwritten rule. It's like, okay, at some point your family are going to have to cut your hair for you. And it's, it's not going to look good, but it will look better than it does now. Society will recognize that some people are in a bit dire situations with hair. <laughs> and they'll be like, you know yeah. what, I, I get it. Also, uh, despite the fact we're still missing a few people, I think now we can... Uh, we've been about 50 minutes till we started streaming, so I could probably... Kick off a little bit of a quick introduction. Alrighty. Yeah, probably do something because obviously if you're if you're uploading this to YouTube afterwards, we should do a an intro as if this was a normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Podcast. So, uh, yeah, I'll just say now. Welcome to the uh, RR podcast, another live edition. Uh, today we're talking about the top 100 intros. Uh, as for regulars, we have O Dog making a grand All appearance. Right. Uh, we also have Joey here. Hello. Yep, okay, cool. Uh, and then for our special guests, uh, we have we have Sid Garcia. Happy to be here. Uh, we have Jake, who isn't here right now. There we go. Uh, and we also have Phenom. Hey. So, as I said, we're going to be talking about the Top 100 Intros, which released... Uh, how long ago now? How long ago was the video posted? Released on the thirtieth of December, so okay, not okay, so not too long Anyone ago. Anyone who wants to should have seen it by now, I reckon. Oh yeah, most definitely. Or at least you'll at least know the who who did well and who didn't really. So yeah, uh, we're gonna start. Okay, hold on, let me just do a little, my little fancy thing here. Okay, cool. There we go. All right, so we're gonna start off then with talking about the the top ten. Um, in detail for each intro, I, pres I presume. Should we go from 10 to 1 or 1 to 10? Probably 10, 10 to, to 1. one. Yeah, yeah, All right. More 10 to 1. Okay, so starting off at number 10, uh, mm -hmm. falling six positions from last year uh, was TBA Season 2. Yep. Um, which has kind of always had a very positive reception. Yes. Probably, probably, one, of the, probably one of like the most vocally positive intros <laughs> I, I've seen the one where people always bring it up as like one of the good intros yeah, yeah definitely there's, there's definitely a cult trying to get that one to number one every year I think it's uh, fair 100%. to say I actually I kind of think the intro is overrated personally I don't think it's to, like I think it's good I, I like it but I've seen people say it's like one of the best intros of all time period and uh, I, don't, I don't know about that it's, I, I it's agree kind of, with Phenom, though. I think it's kind of aged. It's, it's not bad at all. It's a good, solid, solid intro, but I think it's like probably top 20, top top 10 is fine. It's okay if it's top 10. But there's I, definitely a, a, like a group of people that really like it. I, I agree with the sentiment that a lot of people say where it kind of feels like the first modern intro. But uh -huh. that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good by a modern standard. Yeah. It's, really still, it's still good, yeah. but compared to... Other intros of, you know, the rank up highly. I just don't think it's quite the same. I, I think, but I think nostalgia is always going to play a part in this sort of. Thing. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. I th I don't know. I think it's set a precedent. Like, um, I think I think most old intros, all the teams would be displayed in the same way, and this was the first one that kind of tried to mix it up a bit. Mm -hmm. And I think now most good intros will have certain quirks about it. And this was kind of the first one that did that. And I think that's why people hold it in such high regard. I've just personally never been, like, as huge on it as everyone else, to be fair, to be honest. Like, it's good, but um, I've never considered it to be one of the greatest, as other people say. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's like... It, like it, it, I think it did spearhead um, some of the general concepts we see in modern are our intros, but I don't think it's like an amazing standalone product like a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. 
We I feel like we spent a lot longer in previous years discussing. Maybe maybe some of these will be a bit more a bit more in depth, but I think yeah. TBA two kind of is what it is, you know. Well, yeah, well TBA is always a regular at the top of the list, so yeah, that's it's what it's I was not it's, say. it's not a surprise we have nothing new to say on it. Yeah, I think it's we've not said very new. everything that needs to be said every time we've here. discussed it already. Yeah. Although the uh, the next one is one we definitely have, okay. we could, we could yeah. talk a bit about as well, because it is. I mean, it's not new, but it's it's newer than TBA too. Uh, <laughs> number nine, down seven places. Um, Cinema season six. One of oh. my favorite intros, period, in my opinion. Oh, I, I really like cool. it. It's really it's really cool. good. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, that was in fact my first RR intro. I kind of just. I, I was already like doing graphic design beforehand because I helped Grant a lot with the Out of Orbit intros. So I had previous experience, but I never actually tried making my own intro. So, I mean, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. And the like all the feedback I got was really nice as well. That's what like encouraged me to start making more intros. It was overall like a pretty cool little thing. I enjoyed doing it. I feel like with your intros, and I don't want to like delve too much into the others because obviously we don't want to jump the gun and these are mm -hmm. going to um, come up. I feel like people kind of seem to branch your intros into two brackets with like cinema and mythical kind of being in one and then out of orbit and all stars being in another about like yeah, yeah. How, it's, how it's kind of put together and it's like with the latter being a little bit more messy and the first two being a bit more clean. I, I don't know how you view how you view your own intros in that regard um i think in general like my cinema mythical intros are far more clean but that's because they were easier to make um those kind of like renders pop on the screen those are much easier to make than the animated one my all-stars intro i i know i shouldn't jump the gun on it but i consider that uh kind of messy and i'll dive more into that later um whereas this intro i like my cinema intro a lot actually because it feels really clean and especially like that those first 15 seconds ish with like when sonic's team appears and um like that whole drop and it, it's i was really proud of that especially with the slash that appears on son on uh gus's sonic whatever his um his picture i was really proud of that as well and like for me, right, the reason why I chose that song as well was I really like uh, following, like, syncing and following the beat with songs. Like, when you can just, like, nod your head to the rhythm and, like, it, it like, and I can really, I got that when I was making this uh, intro. So I liked it a lot. It's one of my favorites. It might be my favorite. Just for, even though it's simple, it definitely gets the job done. And I think it's kind of a, it's a it, it works well. It doesn't feel messy at all. It feels like a polished product. For sure. Uh, and that uh, gives me one question. Like, how important is it for you to be connected to the music you're using during the production process? Definitely pretty important. Um, I, again, I'll, I'll talk more about Altars later. But uh, in that case, I didn't like the song I was using that much. And in this case, I actually I liked the cinema song. Um, it got a little repetitive, I can admit. Um, but I liked it because... It was still, it felt different from what I normally work with. Cause I think I got the song, I think Jake actually sent it to me. I wish Jake was here, but yeah, he sent it to me. Um, and so it was music I wasn't really used to listening to, but that worked really well for the intro. So I really felt like the rock sort of extreme aspect of the intro with the fire and all that jazz. Yeah, definitely. Like it meshes super well with the theme that you were presenting, and with the visuals you had as well. I think it's just all is very clean in that respect. Like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. Did you have any specific sources of inspiration for making the cinema intro? No, I did have a source of inspiration for the mythical intro, um, which I don't know where I forgot where that's at, but. I'll talk more about that later. But for this intro, I, I didn't really have much inspiration. So I, many intros in the top ten, he just can't keep them all in his head. While they all, <laughs> all in that was a back. He's grown Welcome too back. powerful. I have, I have made a return. Hey, Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm, I'm here to speak my mind into yeah, the infinite void of the internet. Thank you for sending me the uh, cinema intro song. Ah, yes. Um, yep, yep, the rock song. Yep, that's kind of my specialty. It is. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I don't have much else to add on the cinema award because I just, I just really like it. I think it's fantastic for the theme that it's going for. It really, I just, I think it just captures it perfectly. 
It just it just all comes together nicely. I I really have nothing I can comment. This <laughs> the people all I can haven't said say before. is for your. Uh, you said it was your first intro, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. You're insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was definitely helping out Phantom a lot with that intro, just like with giving him feedback. If I yeah, remember yeah. Me, me and Phantom are kind of like partners in crime when it comes to making intros together. Yeah, because I didn't. I didn't make intros beforehand, and Grant is, like, on and off in the community. He's kind of in it, sometimes he's not, and, I mean, he's still connected to intro making, but um, he was very MIA because he was still in university, and he he's, is still now, but, you know, it's different now. Um, so I went to Jake a lot for yeah. intro making advice, and it was very helpful because he helped me figure out the song, and that the song is, like, 90% of... Not, not That's a bit of an exaggeration. I think it's, like... At least 50% of the intro. The song is so important. It can really make or break an intro. And it yeah. also determines your motivation for the intro as well. If you really like the song, then you'll want to keep on making the intro. But if you get kind of tired of the song, then you're going to be like, ah, I'm sort of losing motivation. I'm tired of listening to the same song over and over again. I, uh, I haven't made as many intros as Phenom, but I completely echo everything they just said because that is literally how I feel. Like, I mean, if if a song I'm using for an intro isn't something that I gel with and something I can't listen to over and over again, I'm just going to stop, like, not even halfway through because it's just, it's just not enjoyable. Yeah, it's really like, great. Um... Because I use um, listening to a song over and over again to um, bring us very nicely into number eight on the list because uh, Agency Season okay. 12... Number eight, uh -huh. I've been listening to this song uh, on repeat just in my everyday life since making uh, since making this top 100 list. Yeah. Uh, any any thoughts on Agency 12? I, I have a, some. It's a solid I'll, intro. Uh, um, some people dislike the renders. I really like them. I was actually the renders going are fantastic. To, I was going I to make this amazing. intro, but um, it was just a time where I was busy with school, so I, would, I didn't make the intro. But... I was going to. Craft did a really good job with it, though. I just wanted to make sure, because uh, this was when I was still in agency. I'm not in agency anymore, but um, I saw the renders, and I was like, yo, those are so sick. So I wanted to make an intro with them. I just wanted someone to do them justice, and Craft definitely did them justice. I like this intro a lot. I think I like this intro... The... Oh, sorry, go on. Sorry, go No, no, you guys, fine. I was just going to say, like, it's one of those things where it's like, they don't look even like renders. Like they uh -huh. like they look more like art, which is incredible. I love that kind yeah, of I've... stuff. I I like it when people like put more emphasis into it because it makes it look so much more original and so much more like it. It seems like there's so much more depth into it. I know it's probably more difficult to do, but I it's really a... think it adds more character. It's a it's a very it's a very it's very cool looking combination of render and art. Especially if you look at the if you look at the actual like renders, like I see Danny do work in progresses for them. If you see what is actually just purely on the renders, it's obviously not great because it's lacking a lot of features. But then Danny goes and then adds in those features in post through art, and it really makes them just stand out. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, coming away from the render slash art a bit, I just think you know after nearly a decade of a community. Like, after a while, you kind of need an intro to have something unique about it to stand out. Like, production value on its own sort of stops being the main thing. You've got to have something that stands out. I think this is one of those rare intros where I think it just is just good. Like, there's nothing... The, all right, take the uh, renders out of it, the physical intro itself. There's nothing too special about it. It's just incredibly well made. It fits the song perfectly. The transitions are great. I'm not an intro maker, but I, I could just watch that all day long. I just think it's excellently made. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the the um the art renders I think give it a bit of a, an extra boost, but it just kind of it just comes together like really solid, and then the renders on top of it just bring it over into being something pretty damn good. It looked like he had an idea for it before he even started it. Like it, it looked like it just all came together as one. I like the renders just because of how much character it adds to the individual players. Like I, I especially in like agree, a free yeah. full round, it gives everyone like their own individual. I wouldn't say personality, but it, it just makes everyone seem so much more unique. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the main issues with renders is that they oftentimes just really don't capture a personality. You just feel like you're looking at a Minecraft skin. That's why I really did like Majora's renders. I know some people weren't a fan of them, but to me, I really liked them because they showed so much expression and personality to them, and I like that. It makes mm -hmm. it just feel more unique. But these, 
I think he made one for Ambition, um, but I don't know if it made this list. I, I can't picture them. But, um, what's it called? I know, I, th I think, like, these renders are literally the perfect encapsulation of that. It's perfect personality, and, like, the poses are also cool. And mm -hmm. the intro itself, I think, I do personally think the intro is kind of carried by its renders. Um, yeah. But it's still a good intro. Yeah, like I'm just re I'm look looking through it now. If you could, if you just imagine like some of the poses of these renders, but just they're just regular renders, they would not look anywhere as good. Because yeah. because again, because you said about how regular renders are pretty limited. There's obviously some poses that just look naturally good, but then if you have these more out there poses, when you slap on the kind of blank expressions of a normal render, it doesn't fit. Like, you have someone, like, dramatically tripping, but their face is just like, oh, no, no, I'm falling over. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But with this, you can draw that expression on, put all this effort into the art, and just... Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it, such... I, I love the renders. It's my favorite, like, out of all the art that Danny's made, like, Danny's gone through a lot of different art styles. I'm pretty sure Danny made these, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Um, I figured. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, out of all the art styles Danny has experimented with, this one is my favorite. I really like it, actually. Mm hmm I don't think I'm as high on this intro as the rest of you guys. Like, it's definitely dessert. Like, I don't know if I would say it's top 10. It's definitely deserving of top 20, at the least. Um, I... I, I don't want to say this without seeming mean, but I almost get bored watching it, even though it's... Uh, like it's got all of the high production value that an intro needs, but I think the formula and how long the intro is kind of takes away from it for me. Yeah, I was gonna say that would be like the that the one negative I would have is it goes on for quite a while. But like that would be. I my think you have to blame the agency roster size for that, rather. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. There are some things that are it's not avoidable. Not much cross could have done about that. Hey yeah. Gus, can you just like get less players, please? Can you just like, remove like half the roster? Yeah, just... Specifically, Kazmic, just Kazmic. All right, actually. Can... just remove Kazmic and no one else. That would be first. Great. First, I appreciate you consider me half of the agency roster. Uh, second of all, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Carry an agency on my fucking back. Uh, do we wanna do we wanna move on to number seven? I mean, one last thing I'd say about this is uh, these renders make me sad that we couldn't put Phobia Twelve on this list. Oh yeah, those renders are very good too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, it's more Danny art renders that unfortunately we could, yeah. <laughs> couldn't be on the top one hundred. While we're here, can I just like talk about renders a little bit real quick? Sure, go ahead. Like, I feel like renders are very bland and i don't think that's a controversial statement but i'm just wondering why did people stop give it why did render makers stop putting items in renders because all renders are basically just the player at this point it, it's very rare that i see a render where it's like someone's holding a sword or shooting a bow or is like okay so doing Jake. something with items Jake, i don't know if like, thing there was a point uh, during the point where like the RR community, RR community kind of came back together, and it's like UHC community in general. Because I think it was, I think I forgot when it was, um, but it was sometime either last year or the like the year before last year. Um, and it, there was this point where you know RRs were booming, and people like Yellowvit popped out renders so often, so so yeah. often, and I stopped making renders because of it. I got asked to do renders all the time. Um, it gets just, I think a lot of people just got really tired of making renders, so a lot of yeah. render makers just kind of stopped trying, to be honest with you. Um, they they had a whole batch of people who were already extruded, because a lot of the same people often played. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you just pose it, very little, like, no effort in the posing, just, like, move their arm a little bit or do the same exact posing. And then you have these intros that come out. And even if the intro maker spends a lot of time on these intros... If the renders, which are essentially the subjects, are bad and kind of half-assed, it doesn't really matter. Because yeah. the intro is going to be impacted by that. So it's important think... this kind of cycle where render makers felt, like, uh, I guess underappreciated, for lack of a better term. And they also just felt, like, overworked. Because there really weren't that many render makers. So people yeah, just, I the definitely, a lot of render people the lost motivation for it. They just lost motivation yeah. for it. It's it feels yeah it does it feels like the only way that renders like significantly impact an intro is either if you go 
all out and you have like art renders or you have like animated renders and stuff like that or if you just if they're just like the worst renders of all time the difference between like a below average and render and above average render is like absolutely nothing in the in the grand scheme of an intro which I could go on a whole other tangent on why intros should not have renders, you know, and on a whole, but that's another discussion, so we can move on. I mean, I feel like ultimately, render makers also felt like they weren't, they were basically just being used for the renders. And as someone who was a render maker, I can confirm that's how I kind of felt. You feel like you're not really invested into the project, you're basically just making renders, and that's kind of it. And there was a yeah. lot of rounds that I got asked to make renders for that I wasn't really even in. And I didn't want to be in the round either. But it just was kind of a matter of, like, these rounds like playing, you know, and they need our, our intros, which, you know, that's another topic for another day. Um, but they need our, our intros, so they ask render makers, and then those render makers feel like they're underappreciated, overworked, because they just are asked to do renders so often, and then they don't put as much intro into the effort into the renders and then that's how you have kind of dull renders. Um, yeah. I think intros where someone made both their renders and the intro, those often have some of the best renders because the person feels like it's their own independent project. For, so for cinema, I thought my renders were kind of cool. I like Flues Maker doing like a laser thing in the air. I thought that was kind of cool. I like Dom with a gun. Um, I, was I put effort into those renders. <laughs> yeah, I put effort into those renders because it felt like a project to me. It didn't feel like I was just kind of pitching in to help for some reason in a round I'm not even in, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so, don't, I don't think, uh, I definitely don't think that the sort of intro would have been the same with regular renders. Yeah. Well, and if, if you're looking at the stream right now, uh, the TT20 intro is playing, and a lot of the renders there have, like, I mean, now, like, later on in the intro, a lot of them don't, but early on, a lot of them are, like, holding different items, and I feel like yeah. that is it's a small touch that can make a big difference mm -hmm. yeah I, get that. I totally get that like render makers are overworked and it probably isn't super feas feasible and reasonable i'd so. say it was like that was more in the past back when the like render rrs are coming out like the out yeah. but it's a little more toned down now all right should we uh move on then yeah yep Probably. All right, okay, in that case, we'll talk about the number seven down four places from last year. Probably this would be one to fun to talk about. Chroma Season 3. Chroma Season oh. 3 is an interesting one because it feels like uh, people still really enjoy it, but as time goes on, more people are kind of getting a bit almost hostile towards it. Yeah, I, I still love it. Um... I think it's still a very solid intro. People say... Um, I, I saw someone saying that... It's just effects. It's not as simple as that. That's very much oversimplifying it and not giving enough credit. Um, syncing like that is difficult to do, really difficult to do. And the renders are like, if we're talking about generic renders, I mean, the renders are super generic, but the intro maker was able to really just still make something out of it. And I think like the renders look good because they obviously have a bunch of color correction um, effects onto the actual intro. And the style of it is kind of cool. I, I like the climatic style of it. And the sinking solid. This intro is big carried by the music, in my opinion. But the editing is also just really goddamn good, too, so... Yeah, I, yeah the, the music's great, that. and the, the editing's good. It's just, I feel like... I wouldn't go as far and say it's, like, a bad intro. I still think it's, like, a top 20 intro. But the kind of figuring out some of the elements about it have, for lack of better words, ruined a bit of the magic... Because it feels like, because we feel like it feels like every kind of component was like it was like manufactured for this. It's like wow, it's an incredible piece of, <laughs> per incredible piece of art. And then like you figure like then you find like the background footage, and it's like, oh, it's just like background footage you found. It's still I still yeah. don't think it's like a terrible intro by any means, but just kind of that, that little that, bit of the. Fact that it's just background footage found on the internet makes absolutely no difference to me. Because I would I would rather have stolen background footage off the internet than just uh, flying through a Minecraft world in the sky. Uh, without smooth camera on, which is what I see a lot of intros do these days. Like, I would way rather have stolen background intro footage that looks as clean as that than just a, what a lot of people do at this point. This is fair. I think that's fair. It's just kind I of... Think I think but the, the, the background... Like, the, the thing with the background footage for me is not like, oh, the integrity. He took random footage from the internet. 
it's just kind of a case of it doesn't feel like it's using i think using footage like that doesn't feel like it was a part of like what he decided the intro to be he was like oh i found this this will make a good intro yeah i i know what you're saying with that where it's like it's more so just to like fit in rather than like it's part of the grand scope yeah like it's like you have this grand idea in your head and you're gonna go out and get this background footage that's gonna fit this grand idea whereas in this case it's like oh it just looks nice so i, yeah. I get that yeah yeah and I'm, I'm not i'm not in the camp of the people who like when we we're live watching this in the rr discord people were like booing that it was at seventh and it's like i wouldn't be, i wouldn't put it at seventh i understand it's seventh i'd maybe put it like the mid like the mid 10 to 20s being at seven is all that problem in my personal list i had it as number four actually oh damn so jake loves the music though yeah, <laughs> I, yeah uh, I, I am i am very heavily biased by music and in intros and i'm going to make that very clear i don't know if i have too much more to say on this one though to be honest oh and also anything to say? Oh, uh, dog has disappeared. Yeah. Oh, dog. I, I figured because he wasn't talking much. He's he's gone offline, so he might have uh, lost connection. <laughs> yeah, oh, I no. do believe that is the case. This is tragic. Um. All right. Okay. I guess we'll we'll move on then. Uh, to number six, uh, which is a re-entry after the controversial no number ones last year. Uh, but re-entering at number six is R and R seven. Yeah. Yep. Which is it has stood the test of time. I oh, big adore time. this oh. intro so much. I was actually going to say this has not aged well. Well, I was surprised by that. Okay. I, no, I think no, I think it's aged beautifully. It's aged it's amazing. It's super slow though. Isn't uh -uh. it? No, nope, no, it's not. I don't think so. I can wow. see the. I I see where you're coming from. I feel like i feel like it is a little bit slow like some of the animations are a little slow but i don't think that's bad either i think for me the only part of the intro i think that actually feels slow is the like the introduction like the start of it i think that's the yeah. only part that feels slow yeah as soon as the animation starts it's, it's completely fine Yeah, I, I guess it's just difficult as an as a creator to look at your own work in that respect. Oh, yeah, 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 it, it definitely yeah, is. Yeah. Definitely, definitely is. I really like this intro, though. I think I know you said the beginning part is slow, and I do understand where you're coming from. But to me, it's just so iconic. I really, really like this intro. That like that sound when the sword comes down, and you know, as a Final Fantasy fan, I also really like that like little nod to it. I thought it was super cool. I love this intro. <laughs> Uh, and like you, Fedum, this was very much a thing where I found the music first, and then I just got this visual in my head, and it was just like, oh my gosh, that would make such a cool intro. And then mm -hmm. it just kind of happened from there. You um, were correct. <laughs> uh, and what I was actually like more important to me, like looking back at this now, is just how much 3D animation I learned during the process of making it. And that was just, that in itself was worthwhile. And that, I think that's really cool. Just like mm -hmm. uh, like learning skills as part of making an intro, it's just pretty fascinating mm -hmm. to, to me. Yeah, I totally get that. I learned a lot of stuff while making um, All Stars and a little bit of cinema. Um, nothing else to anyone have else, anything else to add on R and R seven? Uh, um, I don't think so. No. I talked mostly about it. I see O Dog in the call. Are you alive? Yeah, is he here? Is he here now? Hello. Hey. hey. Hello. Um, I guess I could just like add a small detail uh, about what Jake and Fanta mentioned about like detailed renders and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, like the process of making RR Seven was really interesting in that way because. I spent a lot of time on these renders, but a, a lot of details that you don't see at all in the actual intro. Like, uh, Harlan, I, like, made, like, a whole, like, poke Pokeball bag for him. That's, like, fully 3 d e fied oh, and everything. You did. I, I see it. <laughs> uh, and then Fairy, I, like, made him, like, some custom redstone dice that he's, like, throwing in his hand and stuff like that. 
Uh, it's just like tidy details that is really difficult to notice, but yeah, it's just fun to look back on. Mm -hmm. uh, all those small things. Well, if we're talking about personality, um, I thought like the personality you added to the intro is really cool. And actually, um, this was this intro was kind of inspiration for All Stars a little bit um, with the personality out of the renders, as well as some l small little things like how um, Quakes like puts on the headband like with the gesture or whatever, and mm. you can actually like see the headband that kind of thing. That's the sort of stuff I wanted to try and do for the All Stars intro. Um, and I don't know if I succeeded because I don't like watching the intro again, but, <laughs> um, I do think this intro is really good. I, I really like this intro and I do think it's aged well. I, the only issue is the outro also lasts for a pretty long time. It lasts for like yeah. a solid, uh, at least 20 seconds. Yeah. I mean, that was made to be a fade out because that was something Burning did with his old uh, risk and reward intros is that mm -hmm. he allowed like people when they were editing to like fade it out smoothly. So that was more for that uh, than yeah. anything else. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, this, 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 what are we discussing? R&R7. Ah, gotcha. I think it's, it's, it's like a, a super minor grab, grab out with some intros when I'm editing. And I have to like you, you slap the fade out in, and it's like the last team is still on screen when the fade out happens. <laughs> it's, it just looks so messy. So a little wiggle room is always nice. Uh, is Odog back? Uh, yeah, I think so. Hello. Hey, hey what's up? Do you, do you have any comments on R and R seven? Uh. No, I, I, I didn't hear any of what you guys said, so I don't want to repeat myself, that's fine. Fair enough. Well, this is like the perfect time to transition to mm -hmm. the uh, Great Frontier. So, yeah. Right? yeah, last yeah. year's number one, down four to mm -hmm. five. Yep. Um, who, wants to, who wants to start talking about it? I'm just trying to like get together my words about this. I love 2D animation. I want to more 2D animation in our intros. Yeah, that's so hard though. It's really it's difficult. It's super time consuming, so I totally get why like... people don't do it. <laughs> and from um, what I understand though, and this took a lot of time to produce, right? Because of that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it was so like a long. year between playing and releasing, which, okay, and in, in the wake of All Stars 5 might not seem like loads, but it was. <laughs> It was still pretty difficult to keep the rounds even alive while um, while that was all going on. Oh. But um, about, I don't know. I think because I because uh, I made uh, out of not the not the um, intro by the way the top one hundred like I, I was watching the um, premiere for it and sort of seeing people's reactions in the chat when um, each of the when each of the intros came up and this was definitely the one out of the top. 20 i'd say that got the least amount of reaction um could just be because well it was last year's number one and it's down to number five like there's not that much uh to say about it but i don't know if like but i don't know if that just means people remember them they did 18 months ago when they number one number one intro i don't really know what went on there but i still think it's i still obviously i'm biased but i think it's a fantastic piece of work like it's very unique i, I think it's done of where it is i am gonna say something um i might come off as an asshole but i am not afraid mm -hmm. i have I a feeling i have a, f a feeling that uh a lot of the votes for season 7a are in immense appreciation of the amount of work that has to be put in for a 2d yeah. intro I don't yeah. think the intro looks bad by any means, but it's a lot of people like this intro clearly took a lot of time and a lot of work to make, and it is deserving of recognition. Because mm -hmm. I personally think that while the 2D animation is really hard to do, it's like, okay. Um, I think the, of the actual style? The, I, think, I think the style and the execution is all right. And I don't know if as time goes on it will be as well revered as it was when it went to number one yeah which is kind of which is why i led why with people i think vote for it out of appreciation for the work because exactly 2d is so absurd I think a, a lot of people i i completely agree with dom they voted it because it's the amount of work and the uniqueness of the product not necessarily 
exactly how it looked, in my opinion. Like, I, I'll just say it flat out. I love Soul. Soul is a great guy, but um, he probably doesn't do 2D animation too often. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't as someone who talks to him a lot. I think he did a good job with the animation, but measuring, like, as someone, you know, who is an artist, I guess, that sounds lame to say it, but yeah, um, it's difficult, it's really difficult to create a product you like, and then also animate that. When I finish drawing something, I'm like, what? I, I, I would need to, I would need to draw this again, and then, like, with another pose, and then with animation, like, that, that's crazy. It's actually insane what Soul did. I think it's super impressive. But, of course, because of I that, think... and because of Sorry, yeah. time constraints as well, um, the art's not going to be as up to par because he obviously doesn't have like a year to make this. He has probably two months and you have to draw art for like 30 different people. And he obviously, he doesn't do animation too often because um, I, he's more of a beginner sort of artist. And I think he did an excellent job with what he had, honestly. And I think the placement of this intro is totally okay. And obviously, I mean, without even uh, mentioning Bushy, Bushy did an amazing job with the intro as well. I think that was also- I kind of want to talk on that more. Okay. Because I as good as as good as and as as like unique as the two D animation is, I think the editing of the intro is what blew me away more than the animation itself. Yeah, like the I amount know of that. effects that go on in the background is mm -hmm. just absolutely and like there isn't any pattern to it, but it all makes sense, and I think that's what's so incredible to me because that's something I struggle with a lot is throwing in like those random elements that don't feel out of place. Um, yeah. and I think he just did it fantastically, and. Um, it all just fit the theme of like the whatever anime intro song, whatever anime it comes from, or I don't know. Uh, it, it was but, JoJo, and as someone who's watched it, it is very much inspired by the JoJo opening. I also uh, heavily appreciated all of like the masking that went on with like the Minecraft backgrounds. Yeah, um, sure. like there, that one scene where like the trees pop up one by one. Uh -huh. um, like that, that's something that I really took note of. Yeah, they, I think I think Bushi I think, gets a little swept right. under, under the rug for this one, because it is yeah, just, it's kind of hallmarked by this intro has two D animation, and you don't really and Bushi kind of gets a bit snubbed by it, unfortunately. And it's a lot of pressure as well. Like when mm -hmm. when animations have taken eleven months to do, like as an organizer, if the intro that then took those animations on hadn't been up to scratch, I would have been like, well, this was a fucking big waste of time. So. <laughs> It was it was a relief when Bushy pulled something out of the bag that easily matched, if not overshone, um, the uh, the two D animation itself. So yeah, I think Bushy always deserves more credit for this than he actually gets. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. The intro overall totally deserved its spot. I like it a lot. But um, Venom, with what you said about Soul, I think he would be the first to admit that he bit off more than he could chew <laughs> with this oh, project. He he came to me. Soul, yeah. He came to me before the season. He said, I want to do this. Like, you know, for that sort of thing, you'd probably be paying nowadays. I would never put any money into anything um, Minecraft.rr related. So, you know, to just give him free reign and get that for free, I was more than happy for him to take it on. But there were a lot of pushbacks. It was like, oh, I'll be done in three weeks. And then nine months later, he's about halfway through. Like, I think in the end, the quality probably wasn't as good as he would have liked it to be but i think he just needed to get it done because the time the timings were just getting ridiculous by that stage totally got that all right has everyone said their piece on the intro we can move yeah. on to the next one i guess yeah uh again we can we can move on uh from here on out now these are all new debuts these have not appeared in previous lists brand tech i guess brand new intros starting yeah. off with number four mythical season three uh-huh. Um, continuing Phenom's reign of dominance. <laughs> so, the thing is, is that for the intro, um, Kanaka used the wrong version, actually. There's a version with the moles, and there's a version without the moles. And the version with the moles is way better, because I have a really cool effect on the moles. Um, and I wish he used that one, but it's okay, I guess. I'm calling you out, Key. <laughs> the video is, watching. is really high quality. Like the render, like the render and video video quality quality to this is really good. I don't know why. It's just like it's it, it's better than most intros I see. I don't know why. I, just I, I, well, I had to make it a uh, pretty clean looking because when you go for a simple intro like that, you always have to do something that m looks a little more on the clean side. I suppose it's like that's like the one like word 
that I could that, that describes this whole intro. It's just like bold, underlined, clean. Yeah, <laughs> it's just one of the most slick intros I've ever seen. I think I actually, I think I actually, I think I kind of, I think I missed this intro when it first, like it first got released. Uh huh. And I like caught it again while the top 100 stuff was going on, and I was like, oh my god, Jesus, I missed this happened. What the fuck? It's really good. Yeah, I, I was pretty proud of it. Yeah, making the list, it was actually the first time I had ever seen it. It definitely came out during my dark times um, <laughs> in the in the Reddit community. But I think on first watch, it was my least favorite of your four intros, which, to be fair, doesn't really say a lot because the bar is uh, incredibly high. But I think, to, I think it's probably the best produced. I'm not an intro maker, so I don't want to jump the gun, but I think it's probably the most clean out of the four. Yeah, I mean, out of someone who's made, uh, I think, a couple messy intros, for, for me at least, um, I am more proud of his intro for how simple it was, but it was it was cleaner because it was more simple. Um, when I was able to more just kind of, I wouldn't say, it wasn't recycling, but I was still able to use the same sort of idea for each team and each player, it felt a lot easier to make, um, because it was. <laughs> and it was just faster and looked a lot better because of that. I didn't need to separate it into tons of different little videos with tons of different little side effects and whatnot. I didn't I need to do any of that. Um, so it was a lot easier. Same with the cinema intro. But for this intro, I was more experienced on top of that. So it worked better. Um, I still like my cinema intro more. But I was pretty happy with the mythical intro came out. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I, I think this is probably my least favorite of the of the of the um, yeah. all the intros but again as odog said it's like the least favor of like a bunch of incredibly good intros isn't really a problem when the, the lowest quality one is still really damn good phantom needs to be brought back down to work after this podcast <laughs> for sure <laughs> you you are owed one mandatory bad intro uh maybe maybe <laughs> I was gone for most of the conversation on Mythical, so I assume that most of what I was going to say has probably already been mentioned. But I mean, you can say it anyways. Basically, the one thing I wanted to mention is how you did the uh, character outlines behind yeah. uh, the renders. That, that's my favorite part of the intro, personally. I think that's awesome. I don't know how you did that, but... Um, there was this glowing outline effect in After Effects, and so what I did is I made copies of the renders and then applied it and then changed the alpha opacity and masked some of it, and mm -hmm. that created that like animated thing yeah it looks so cool it adds so much depth to the background that really took the intro to the next level yeah yeah for sure i again i have that part um with the mythical intro where because there's this um the one we know the vampires it's, it's actually doesn't look like it was like fully finished but i'll link it real quick um I, I i think i took down the original one and then just sent it to kel with the vampires because um, he didn't want it up anymore because it got a lot of views and, and people got the link somehow. So he told me just to take down. But this is like one of the prototypes for what the vampire intro did look like. So uh, if you watch it, you'll notice that like on the parts where there's vampire, it goes like black and then there's a screen shake and then there's like a red and it says vampire. It's normally like way slower and I know it looks a little glitchy, but that was what it actually looked like when I sent it to Cal. It was like a more polished version of that. Oh, yeah. That is very cool. I dig that. That's mm -hmm. a very so nice effect. That that adds a lot more depth to the intro, and I wish that was used because like a lot of people didn't see it. But because I, I don't even know when I sent it to Cal if he even like used it. I don't know if anyone used it, uh, which is unfortunate because that was still like another hour, two hours of work. But it's whatever. I feel like you should make this version public. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> or a version of it, just anything, because that, that's some very cool detail to me. Yeah. I have one question. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you draw the Dracula silhouette for the logo? No, that was uh, that was just a logo that was given to me by Sam. Uh... Um, and I just said, hey, give me all the attributes of the logo. And, gotcha. and then I got the little bat effect. I got that straight uh, from some... I, got it, I did follow some After Effects tutorials step by step. 
and I made some pretty convincing looking bats. I was like, you know, these look like bats. Cool. So then I just added that, and it says vampire, and that, that worked pretty good actually. So yeah, very good, very cool. All right, uh, right. Yeah. we could probably move on to the next one. Uh, all right. I, wait, can I open on Paradox? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I want to say Paradox Four is a fantastic intro. Yeah, but it should not be number three. Yeah, this was the biggest what the fuck However, moment. All but... I, that the problem is it is not Paradox Four's fault that it is in third place. So I think we should say now that later down the line we'll have a conversation on boosting. But for I now, think there might be a lot to say about boosting. As an intro, and take take its placement out of it, and just actually talk about the intro itself, because yeah, I don't so... want it to get completely wrapped up in the. I gotta, I, I gotta say something. Here. I gotta say something here. Um, that background with the spinning globe and whatnot. I think I've seen now three intros that have used that for a background. Um, it's a very common background that like spinning globe thing. I've seen agency use it once. I saw, I think, I think I saw, this might have been, um, I, it might have not been Fission, but I thought I saw Fission use it once. Um, so that planet thing, I've seen it a lot. I don't know where that background is on YouTube, but I'm pretty sure I've seen it a lot. Um, regarding the intro itself, it's fine. I don't really think it deserves top three either. The music is fine. Really nothing too special. It's like your general uh, cinematic kind of music. And then the art is good, but, you know, that this is the same art they've been using. And the the editing and stuff is also, it's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it, I just, it feels really high, to be honest. Yeah, I think this, this, I think this intro is, like, this intro is, does, I think it does the best at what it's trying to do. But what it's trying to do isn't anything super crazy it's yeah, just it's just sure. like taken to the like the app the, the perfect the, the, the perfect end point of what it's trying to do but what it's trying to do isn't i think that impressive in the first place yeah it kind of just seems very similar to agency 12 just without the really cool renders i i might be completely off there but they no i like, i see they remind me of each other because i get very similar feelings about both of them where I think both of them have very high production quality, but uh, similarly, um, not to the fault of Paradox, I get bored watching it just because of how long it is and how much the formula doesn't really change throughout that much. Yeah, completely agree. And the thing is, is that there is really nothing keeping it uh, different at all, like it, throughout the entire intro. There's no like cool little, eff besides the art effects, which personally I've gotten kind of tired of, um, I think art effects need to be really, really different in order to make them pop out. But there's no background effects, really. The background doesn't change or anything. The text kind of stays the same. The card is kind of unnoticeable, and like the little attributes on the card feel kind of pointless, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, like, I don't know... Uh, what why occupation is there i don't know it's just kind of strange it feels like it's just kind of filler in my opinion and it doesn't look that different uh throughout the intro i get kind of bored of watching it as well i feel like you could put any of the four paradox intros in any order of quality and i wouldn't be too shocked at what order you picked i think there were a few things i like about the intro that i can uh comment on if you don't mind, you, I you guess. You can leave my Paradox 1 intro further down there. I don't mind that at all. Um, I, I'm as high on it anymore, but that's another one story. Of the, um, one of the things I like is, like, at first, like, I, I only just noticed this, but, like, oh, although, like, the background and things doesn't change, um, I, it's the, so I'm pretty bad with words, but um, there is, like, this little glowy effect that goes around the screen, which showcases, uh -huh. like, the color of the teams. And at first I was, like, what team all these guys on? I couldn't tell. I only just realized just now that like that was the um, that like, that 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 was showing what team they won and, and everything. I just think that's that's cool. So they did change some things throughout the uh, mm -hmm. throughout the production. I think I I think I also remember Bacon saying once that like the um the diet like like the the cards have some kind of meaning, but I don't know if many people know what it is yet but i think it i think bacon said it was like something that he knows about with the round or something it's it, it's, it, it he would know better than me i think if you're yeah, gonna just... do uh stat cards like that the reasoning for them being there needs to be obvious 
Because I think for a general audience, yeah, isn't super invested. Like it's very hard to pinpoint why they're there, and that's in general why I have like a big problem with just like putting stats in your R intros. Like same, it just feels. It feels part, like I have filler. never liked it. It it very much just feels like filler of like, yeah. uh, this intro is gonna be boring. Uh, quick brain, think of something cool that we could add to this intro to make it less than just render plus text. Wait, let me just add stats. Oh, wait, they're useless. They don't mean anything. So it's just blend anyway and more work. Um, maybe that was a little harsh, but um, I do, I do you know, get that. I'm not a very big fan of the stats being there. Uh, I've only used it once, and that was in my Agency 10 intro, and I felt like it almost made sense because uh, Agency Spy. I don't know. Like, I feel like the context for them there make, made more sense than they do here. But then again, I'm not aware of the context for them here. So um, I think, um, like, yeah, I think I've said basically anything I wanted to. Yeah, I just want to quickly come to the defense for this intro in particular regarding that. Because I think this is regarding, like, the lore for each character. So occupation is like... Yeah, that's that's what I meant with the card earlier. I wasn't sure the best way to say it. But, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what yeah, I meant. I'm There's a bunch of paradox, paradox lore or something. But I also lore, agree yeah. with what Jake and Venom said, where it says, like, for a casual viewer, you won't understand it. But, like, unless you're super invested into the quote-unquote paradox laws you could say you won't understand it but i think in like the grand scheme of things like as a project it's really good but as like if you're just a casual viewer watching it for the first time you're going to be a little confused paradox this intro and paradox is like by far one of like the least offenders of uh having stats in your intro for no reason there are significantly worse examples of intros that have stats for no reason out there yeah, at least there's a there is a reason for these stats, yeah. even if they're kind of it's kind of vague. Like I get the I get deep lore for around appearing in the intro, but it just if it doesn't it still doesn't feel tied to things yet. If there is a plan for it, and as of right now, we can only really judge what we see. And I don't gain a whole lot by learning that Cyclone's occupation is magic fairy. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. okay cool <laughs> i think debut season is probably the most irrelevant stat that's actually very common yeah mm -hmm. i think the only time it is relevant is when you're doing some kind of chronological teams where the teams are actually based on the season you joined a la wmc 13 outside of that like even new dawn 13 where it's like a former winner of the top 100 like there is absolutely zero need to have that included I have always, I have never been a fan of that Nude on 13 intro. Me neither, but I think I that's like, a discussion for later. Yeah, yeah I think that, that intro might be one of the, the biggest beneficiaries from recency bias of all time. Um, I, again, that that's bad. I five the ones that come to mind. I agree. Yeah, but... I mean, it, it was the lowest of, of the five former winners. It was the lowest in this rankings, but it was still in 15th place. It's not a bad position. Yeah, no, not at all. all. I, I think you've probably said most of what needs to be said about this round at this point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, then we get to move on to number two, which is... Let's out... boost Phantom's ego some more. Woo! <laughs> out of Orbit, the final mission. Yeah. Personally, my favorite uh, of the, uh, the Phantom quadrilogy. Same here, same here. So, um, I've noticed while looking at my intros, and I don't feel like I feel like there are cases, right, where only the intro maker notices the flaws, right? They're, and they're just like, you know, only the producer in general notices the flaws, only the artist notices their flaws, only the intro maker, whatever. But I really do feel like there is a glaring flaw in my intros where it shows that I get kind of put under pressure and the ending always feels a little bit off. It just feels kind of off because you can tell that like maybe this this person's head moves at a weird frame and like they shouldn't move there or like there's this little transition that kind of looks like it's screwed up a little bit and it messes with the sinking just a tiny bit but that tiny bit kind of like overlaps and you have a sort of a messy product. That's how I really feel about All Stars very passionately. Um, but I kind of get the same vibe for Out of Orbit. I was, I, I'm again, like, kind of, uh, I was more of a beginner intro maker kind of thing. Because Out of Orbit, um, was, Out of Orbit came after All-Stars, right? Or did it come it, before? It did come after, yes. Okay, it came after. 
Um, so I was a little more experienced with Out of Orbit than I was in All Stars, but All Stars is like, uh, that was my first time making a bunch of animations and it showed. Um, but for Out of Orbit, I was, it's more polished. I was pretty proud of this intro. I like the transitions I did. Um, I really want to use this song because I adore Bravely Default. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Yes! Um, so I had to use it. Uh, so I was really, I was happy with the product. Um, I do think I had some issues, but it came out cool. Um, yeah, Fennec, can I just ask us on deep dive technical questions about this intro? Because it yeah, just yeah, impresses course, me to no end. It's just incredible. Okay, so how did you do the like environment transitions in the same clip? That just impresses me every Okay, time. so basically, um, there is this world thing called uh, Mineways. I maybe you've used it, maybe you've heard of it, mm -hmm. um, where you can transport a Cinema 4D, uh, you can transport a Minecraft world into Cinema 4D, and then all you have to do is just texture it, right? Yep. So what I did was I asked Sill to make me little 100 by 100 samples of every single world type uh, in every season, based off of the season where someone first joined, as far as we knew. Um, so that is why people like Shane and Misha, they're on Mars, because they joined Mars in the first season. I thought that was a, I actually thought that was kind of a cool idea. I was pretty proud of that. Yeah. Um, same with Dom. Dom, joined, Dom is on the Earth planet because that's, you know, where he joined. So I told Sill to make these little samples of the worlds. Um, for City World, there wasn't a sample because that is a script, so I just chose a generic city map. But for the rest of them, they were all based on these samples that Sill gave me, these 100 by 100 samples. And then I just used the same world, and I copied the world, and then I would uh, include different copies so that when one world finished, the region of another world came up. So I had two different, uh, I had the same world, but two different regions of the same world for each team. Gotcha. So, yeah. Oh, wow. So, so still came pretty clutch because uh, he was re it was really nice of him and, re and helped the intro significantly by him making those 100 by 100 uh, like samples of each and every planet. And then he also keyframed the skybox to go with that, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> oh. Here I am thinking I'm kind of understanding intros more and maybe getting a little better at them. And then you say all this and I'm like, <laughs> my mind is oh, just go. going a thousand <laughs> miles a minute. I, I have uh, negative experience with animation, so. <laughs> uh, and also one more question uh, mm -hmm. about the names. Were those manually keyframed? Yes. Oh so basically, God. I had a um, I had a circle thing going. So I had a circle path, and the thing is, is that the the text. Well, actually, I guess it wasn't yes then. It was like it, it kind of, kind of. So the circle was manually placed, right, and where the t where it went around the teams, yeah. and then I made the three D text in the Cinema Forty, um, and then I rotated it around the players following the circle pathway. So originally, what I was doing was when I first made the intro, the first prototype, I was trying to make the text rotate in After Effects. It did not work. That was the worst idea ever. <laughs> um, it was much better to do it in the same program as Cinema Forty. Now, the issue was timing the rotating text on the players slow enough so that the animations felt like you could read the text and the text wasn't going like super fast past them. And on top of that, I had to make sure the other text was also rotating correctly. Um, because there's some weird like keyframe uh, like speed velocity things. So, and I had to change the keyframe sometimes. Yeah, I couldn't change the speed of the text itself. And then once I began messing with the keyframes, there'd always be these loose little keyframes that would freeze the text. And that was mm -hmm. one of the main issues that I was experiencing. Um, but it, you know, it came out cool. I was happy with how it came out. Um, if you guys remember, there was this intro that Grant made a long time ago. It was supposed to be the Neptune intro, which never happened. And it was a pretty cool that. intro. Um, and... No one noticed, it seems like, but the same text that was in that broken, like that, not broken, that was in that unfinished Neptune intro, that's the text for this intro. So, oh. yeah, because I really liked the text that Grant made for that intro, and we wanted those resources to go somewhere, so I used it for this intro, and it came out really cool. So oh, That's so that. smart. I love mm -hmm. that. Oh, good work, Fado. I'm so impressed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> And then, like, the leafs and the effects and whatnot that heavily lowered the bitrate of the video, um, those were just added in After Effects. Pretty simple stuff. The issue with uh, adding snow, rain, leafs, 
I'm sure you guys noticed, it heavily decreases the bitrate of the video. As the more stuff you have going on, the, the lower the bitrate of the video is going to be. And I was really obsessed with quality for this intro, hence why it's 1440p. Yeah, I remember you talking to me about that. Um, Because, to my opinion, quality a lot of the time makes or breaks an intro. Whether you notice it or not, if you can tell how crisp something is, you'll appreciate it a lot more than looking at this kind of low-quality blurry intro. Even if the low-quality blurry intro, you can see how it could be good, it's just when it looks higher quality, it you just naturally like it more because you feel like you understand more what's going on. At least that's for me. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the intro looked good. And I couldn't figure out why the bit where it was kind of bad. That's because it was because of snow. But the snow and the leaves and all that like desert particles and stuff, that's what adds a lot to the intro. So I had to keep that. Yeah. Totally adds like so much atmosphere and depth to the scenes. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Totally worth it. Um... I have just one small question before anyone else can start talking. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Fedem, how excited are you for the soundtrack to Bravely Default 2? I'm so excited for it. Awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Hopefully, all kinds of In that vein, has anyone ever used an Okami soundtrack in I an don't intro before? That. No, that's and true. That, Actually, wait, no, no, no. Uh, Quill used it in a nude on intro. Oh, I remember now. Oh, oh, okay. Quill remember bringing now. justice to the world. Yes. <laughs> I was Shout out uh, comedy music. The main reason why the Adam Warbit intro is my favorite is to say one more thing. My dog's getting mad because he's tired of me talking about the Adam Warbit intro. Um, <laughs> is there's this one transition where Tom and Ixo's team finishes, Grant and Mick's team starts, and then there's this like part where it goes to Jake and Carl. And I really like that part because the song fits it really well. And I also like the part. Uh, where Jinko falls from the sky, and there's that's like my favorite part of the intro when Jinko yeah, falls from the sky. My that's my favorite part of the yeah. intro. Yep. Yeah, it's just just those small touches that matches like syncs with the music. That's just like, and the music develops differently throughout the intro. That's just magic. I love that. Yeah, I was pretty proud of it. Yeah. I feel like pretty much anything that we've been said about this intro has probably just been said between uh, <laughs> probably, probably. You got any more questions, uh, Sid? <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> Alright, in I, that I, case... Phenom, do you remember uh, when you were sending me a draft of this intro? Uh, the stars at the very end, um, when you were like transitioning out of it, there was a oh, yeah. there was like, uh, instead of transitioning from Out of Orbit the final season into like the stars... Uh-huh. Uh, there, was like a, there was like a pause. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're just frozen in place, and I was like, "Why you better fix that?" I swear to God. Yeah, yeah, because like it messes the whole like idea yeah. intro. So I made the start. It was it was like one of the cleanest intros I have ever seen. And then there was like this one little error at the end of it, and Phantom, you were like dead on motivation. But I was like, I swear to God, Phantom, you need to fix this. Yeah, that just that happens to me with intros. The finale always looks like kind of rushed, and uh, that segues pretty well into All Star. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the number one RR intro uh, of all time ever. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Uh, all Star Season 5. Yeah. It won by over 100. Yes, somehow. Points. Somehow. I <laughs> received double the points of third place. Which is yeah, so impressive. I have so much to say about this intro because it took such a long time. So. Um, first, I'll talk about the history behind the intro, okay? Because this is interesting, and some people might have not heard of this. I've, I've told this story to a lot of people, but people who might not, like, I haven't spoken to about it, probably don't know it. Um, so basically, All Stars 5 was in definitively what you would call intro, or just rather production hell. Um, the intro went through a lot of different people, and, uh... Wow, my dogs are mad today, I don't know why. <laughs> um, the intro went through a lot of different people. It went through, I think, Learning, then it went through Brick, then it went through me. And Learning spent about, like, six months on the intro, and it seems like he was just really busy and didn't really tell people that much. Um, so, because of that, around, like, six months, five months passed, and there was no intro. There was no product, anything. Because I think Len told Learning, you know, make the intro, or, uh, you know, he told him, to make the intro. I think he might have paid him as well, uh, or was going to. And then um, it just kind of happened. We're learning to, I guess, got busy. And so nothing really happened for the past six months. And then people were a lot about, like, canceling the season and completely canceling all that. 
Um, and because a lot of people were running out of patience, six months and no intro when people were expecting an intro, like there wasn't even really like a tease or anything. Learning just kind of dropped it. Um, and then Brick w said he would make the intro, and Brick started working on the intro a lot. But then eventually, I think Brick had to go to China or something like that. I'm pretty sure. Um, and because of that, he had very little access to his computer. So around a month passed, and Brick couldn't make the intro anymore. So then uh, they had one little person to turn to, and I was originally there just for production. I was just going to make the logo, and that's it. Um, but Lenboy asked me to make the intro, so I did, and I made it in about four or five months. Um, I really wish I had more time with it, because my scope for the intro was just gigantic. It was really, really big. Um, I spent so much time with that intro. Um, because I was trying to do so much, and I didn't really have as much time as I wanted to. But at the same time, part of me was like, I can't make people wait, they've already been waiting a year. I wouldn't mind making people wait six months, but it'd be six months on top of the already eight months they've waited. Um, there's even, the chat was in disarray, everyone was going to, you know, delete their footage, so I had to, you know, step in and, uh, try and make something. And I was pretty proud of how it came out, but I think that's ultimately why it isn't as perfect as I really wanted it to be. I really wanted another month with the intro. Um, it's just, it's small things that I messed up. Um, it was the, the ending credits go by way too fast. You can barely read them. And the ending in general feels kind of rushed. But I'm still really proud of the beginning of the intro. I think that story of this intro just makes it such a much more momentous production just because uh -huh. of everything that went behind it. And Fanny, you're such a kind-hearted soul to take on so much <laughs> odd work by yourself. Like, I can't imagine the yeah, labor the, at play here. This was this was during a time where perhaps I was a bit more of a, a bit of a kinder person because I, I took a lot of stuff. And um, this was one of them. I was I bit a lot more products than I could chew a lot of the time. And this was kind of an example of that, but I was also really proud of its outcome. And I did enjoy working on it. But let me say this. I can never hear the Smash theme ever again. <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh my no, god. The minute my game starts up, I'm, I, I'm just spamming the start button. I am so tired of that song. I was watching... Like, oh, that's um, okay. No, that makes more sense. I was watching Alpha Rad's, like, Nuzlocke video, and I actually skipped the part of where he finished it, because I was like, I can't hear the song. I'm, I'm happy you finished the Nuzlocke, man. I'm happy, but I cannot hear this goddamn song ever again. No, stop, stop, stop. I listened to that so many times, and it's like... I don't want to be an ass, but it's not even that good of a song. Like, I used it because Smash was really relevant during the time. And I love Smash, don't get me wrong. But Smash was super relevant during the time, so I wanted to go for, like, a Smash-themed kind of thing. Because um, I thought that'd be cool. Because um, it was kind of being used for the teasers, I think. That's also why I stuck with it. Um, it was being used for the teasers and the trailer, kind of. So I was like, oh, I, I, have, to, I have to stick with the Smash theme. So that's why I used the song. Um... And geez, it was it was a handful. Yeah, I can't imagine. But I also feel like Smash Brothers is so 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 thematically relevant to what All Stars is. It's like everyone's yeah. here, you know? So. Exactly, exactly. It fits perfectly. Yeah, it's I was gonna say to be in a position where you've got people in the chat threatening to delete their footage and to come up with potentially the best intro of all time under those circumstances like i have to applaud you for that like, thank you thank you pressure. yeah it was, it was so much pressure there were so many times where i stayed up like until like 5 a.m working on that intro um i've never pulled an all-nighter personally i'm just not I, I i normally can't i can only do if i'm on like a sleepover but um i was pretty close to pulling an all-nighter and it was it was stressful because I, people also always want estimated dates, and I tried, I estimated one date, and I got it wrong, because I'm really bad at dates, and I estimated another date, and I did get it out on time, but people were, like, kind of losing their patience. Um, even when the intro came out, and I was like, okay, here's the intro, everyone, it really didn't get much feedback, actually, from the regular chat. A lot of people seemed like they really just lost passion for the event, um... But when it actually came out on the subreddit, everyone really liked it. So I was really happy with that because I was afraid that, like, I worked this hard and 
people were still kind of sour about holding onto their footage for a year, which I don't blame them for, but... I think uh, if anyone was like that, it wasn't anything towards you. It was yes, just towards, I was aware. like, I was the aware other it people. Personal. Yeah, yeah, I was aware. Uh, people were mad at Len as well for ending All-Stars. That was also an entirely different drama in of itself. And I was kind of caught in the middle of that. But people did like the intro itself. So I that was cool. I, I think mean, we'll I save that it. discussion for another day. Yeah, another exactly, day. exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of drama with All-Stars. Don't get me wrong. Mark, we love you, man. Please come <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now that I have this platform, I gotta ask, because there's one thing that really, like, bugs me about the All-Star yeah. intro that I've never that really sure. understood. Uh-huh, okay. Say, drop it. The first, like, I think the first three teams have, like, little title cards. Yes, yes. But none of the others do. <laughs> yeah, so... I've always wondered why. <laughs> that was, um, another thing I was struggling with this intro... There's a lot of teams. Like, a <laughs> lot, a lot of teams. Um, so, nobody really noticed, so I'll just drop it right here. Um, the intro used to be around 2 minutes and, like, 45 seconds. It sped up. Hence why the outro is so fast. So, that is the explanation. Um, do you the have the original? I think I do. I, you believe I, it. I really want to say that. I will, it's slower, um, but it's really not that different. It's just kind of slower. Because nothing is really synced anyways, so it didn't change anything, because I didn't sync anything. Um, syncing to a song like that was kind of difficult with the animations. I was trying to sync it originally, but then I came to the realization that trying to sync a song along with animations you're currently working on that all have their own story and are around 15 seconds long each at least doesn't work. It just doesn't. Um, um, yeah, it wouldn't work. So, I, I, syncing is non-existent for that intro. Um, I'll try and find the original product of it, but, yeah, it was sped up. And on top of that, the original thing was, I think, around three minutes. Um, no one's gonna watch an intro that's three minutes long. So, then I cut out around 15 seconds of it, because I just, you know, I, I just changed, you know, some timing and whatnot. And then, even then, it was two minutes and 45 seconds, so I sped it up, and now it's, like, two minutes which is a lot better. But two people, minutes is still really long. If people will watch ten minutes worth of the AP10 intro back-to-back, -back, I'm sure they'd dedicate three <laughs> minutes to watch that. You could have used it as, like, a, a trailer or something. Like, you could have, like, phoned that out first, and then after that you could have given people, like, the sped-up version to use in their episodes. That was a... That, that could have happened. Yes, someone did suggest that. Um, at that point, it was going to take longer for the production aspect. I mentioned that it'd probably take at least another two weeks for the production aspect, and Len really wanted to just get the season out, so I was just like, okay, let's just get it out then. That is, uh, it's just unfortunate timing, really. Um, it was a matter of... The issue with making an intro that I really liked it was that in order for me to really polish it, I needed more time. Um, versus if you make something like a really rushed render intro, it's clean, but it's clean in like a bad way because it's really generic. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing amazing about it either. For this intro, my scope of it was so big and I spent so much time into it and there's so much things that could have gone wrong that I really needed more time to polish it, but I just couldn't get that time because we were on such, such harsh constraints. Um, the sooner we got that intro out, the better. It was really just a matter of, like, ASAP. Because people were already kind of annoyed with the estimated date that I gave, and I already missed that first estimated date, so then I tried giving another, and people were even more annoyed. Especially because I, I, I gave a couple teasers of the intro, but I really hid most of it from people, because I, I prefer giving people the final product, not, like, little tidbits. Um, so, yeah, people were frustrated. So I couldn't work on the intro more, and I really wanted to... Uh, I was also getting tired of it, because I was getting frustrated. My computer was really bad at the time, and I had After Effects files that had at least 100 gigabytes overall, and I also had very small hard drive space, and After Effects, if anyone's worked with the program, knows it's probably the laggiest program ever. Yeah. So, uh, it wasn't exciting for me either, to be honest, to continue working Lackier on it. Laggier than Vegas? Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Vegas is like butter to after effects <laughs> yeah it really is oh no <laughs> <laughs> um i'm saying that and having used after effects for like maybe less than four hours total 
<laughs> yeah, big project after effects, bad idea most of the time. <laughs> yeah. It's rough out there. Um, Phantom, I don't know how much time you spend in pre-production, but I have some, like, lore questions. Would you be up to answer that? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll try my best. Okay, so I'm taking I'm taking a look at the map that the Pathfinder crew is holding here. Yeah. Uh, and we got a bunch of devils here. We got like Dead uh -huh. Valley and stuff. Uh -huh, Does uh -huh. this take place in the Phobia verse? Uh, cause of like demons, uh, abandoned lighthouse could be like aquaphobia, I guess. Or um, the idea was that they're in the same kind of world, right? So Ooh. you're kind of right, but. The lighthouse wasn't meant to be, like, hydrophobia. That's interesting. I didn't think of it like that. Um, it was more just them trying to find, uh, like, the artifacts, which in this case were, like, the Ender Eyes, which led yeah. to TPE. That was, like, ultimately what it led to. Um, yeah, that was the objective. Cool, I really like that. That's such a cool, like, story development. Yeah, I wish, like, the only issue is that, really that cool. uh, my TTE transition was horrible i that was like one of the main ones where i could just really tell i was getting so tired where like they jumped to the portal looks super clunky because i probably spent like two minutes making the jumping animation because jumping animations are a pain and then they just kind of look up and then the intro just sort of recycles itself which is a little lazy um but it's like i was getting so tired of working on it it, it, get, it got very uh tiresome doing like tons and tons of new stuff every time because i really tried to represent each Season, I wanted the transitions to be perfect. Um, I've watched a lot of, like, uh, you know, anime, Vocaloid kind of videos. It's like the transitions are just perfect. And I really wanted to capture that. Um, and I think I kind of did. I really liked the train where, like, Twinkie and um, Tommy and Michael go into, like, the train or whatever. And then the trail go train goes past GGMC, which is, like, the house. And then it zooms in on Kanako and Burble. I was really proud of that because I think that's a cool transition. Um, that was, like, a lot of the time what I aimed for. I really wanted to go for those cool transitions, and, uh, because of that, some parts of the intro, uh, just felt more clunky than others, I guess. But I, I was trying to aim for more of a smooth transition. I think if, if I had a better computer, right, and I had the whole project in front of me, it would be so much easier. I could, like, there were small little errors that I could fix pretty easily. It was just... It would take sometimes two minutes for like me to like load a single keyframe and move this little character, oh. and I couldn't keep all those Cinema 4D files on my computer because the animations themselves took a day to render. And like, sure, me, I could just change this one little animation and it'd be really nice, and that would impact the intro in the long run. But it would take a day, and then that would procrastinate the intro for a day. And yeah. then if I kept on doing that for every animation, then before yeah. I know it. I w it would be another it's month. Like, every one minute. animation turns into eight animations, turns into... Yeah, the exactly. And then on top of that, I'm applying a bunch of these effects to the background, to the intro, and then I need to worry about how those effects and backgrounds are affected based off of the, and the changes of the animation I made. There are a couple animations I actually redid, but, um... Like, the Fission one? The Fission one was completely different. Same with the Frenzy one. Those two were completely different before. Um... So I just really tried making... I, I eventually realized the intro is not going to be polished. It's not going to look perfect. I can't make it perfect with my computer, with the time constraints. But I'll just try and make something that is really vibrant, colorful, different, and shows I put a lot of effort into it. And hopefully ends all throws on a good note. Because the season... and season was solid. The season was very solid. But the production and people's ideas of, like, mindset towards going into the intro and, you know, watching and posting their perspective, it was very negative because a lot of people understood the drama behind it. So I just wanted to make something that was, you know, polished, everyone loved and left all stars on a really good note. And I feel like I did do that, but I wish I had more time with it from, you know. You definitely did. Part. Yeah, I think considering the time constraints you had and that you did all this work on your own, I think you did amazing. Thank like, you. the entire All Source crew should just, like, fund you a, a render farm at this point for everything you've done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say that New Dawn Kingdom Hearts reference is so cute. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't that. play Kingdom Hearts, but I noticed that immediately, and I was like, that is so good. Like, that is yeah. really, really good. Yeah, I was really proud of that, too. I, I I just tried making it, you know, 
iconic to the intro, so that's why, you know, there's also that Pokemon thing, you know, where they all show up with their, uh, like, their trainers or whatever in Nuzlocke. Um, yeah, and Addiction has the, like, color bars changing. And yeah, and Lead Boy, there. like, throws down the clock or whatever, then BGR catches it, wakes up Bushy. Uh, I, I was, I'm, I'm happy with the intro. It just, it's, it's small things that annoy me. Yeah. And also, I have to listen to it muted. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> for, for my own vanity. Well, I think it's absolutely well deserved. Like, I can't imagine all the work you put into this. Uh, it's so deserved, number one, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think there was ever any doubt that it was gonna. Yeah. Finish. I think like a lot of people... people had that mentality. Surprisingly, I think I, there are people who say it's not your best intro, but I think the community's opinion in general, it was never going to finish anywhere other than yeah the, i think the just the scope of the project itself carries a lot of weight i think no, in the it, it's similar chat, to also. s7a like yeah. the weight of the yeah the amount of time you spent on it is always going to carry some weight as well yeah i i feel like in the all stars chat someone or a few people even said that like this is going to be like the number one intro of the year or something because i think people said that like it like i think it just missed out last year's yeah, it Top did. 100 for like a couple close. of weeks, and everyone was like, "This would have been number one then if it uh, if it had the ability to be cred to be credited." So uh, I think uh, this has been a long time coming. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Um, I am. I actually. I am looking at the slow down like version, and I also just got the original and just put it to 0.75. It's a lot better when I slow it down. Um, maybe I should have just kept it at the original speed, but I was afraid of like. The, nu the numbers but then again two minutes and 30 seconds versus two minutes really doesn't impact very much it's still a long time and there's no way i was making it a minute and 30 seconds yeah, yeah that enough. would not have worked <laughs> it would not yeah. be readable at all so um dom that is why i got rid of the the team transitions all and right. if you're wondering the reason why i didn't remove them it's because the videos and the animations accompanying them were gone i i didn't have them anymore because i deleted them because i was uh i needed more space <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yeah, these are the limitations of having a really bad computer when I did this. This Damn. is before I got my new computer. Relatively now. I right. would have thought you were sat working in some like graphics studio with the qualities of the intro, like the fact <laughs> that you, the fact that you produce this quality on that computer. I'm, I'm, I'm astounded, honestly. Uh, do we wanna, do we wanna yeah. move on? Yeah, I think the I think, uh, the, la I think yeah. the last question I really have at this point is thoughts on the top ten as a whole. I think it's really solid. I think the only intro that really doesn't deserve to be there is Paradox, and I love Paradox, but it just doesn't deserve to be there. Paradox I and Above were the big outliers for me, but like, they're still probably both top fifteen. I would just bump them out of the top ten. Yeah, agreed. I, I would have swapped eleven, but that's just my opinion. By the time you get to the top 10, in the comments of the premiere, you've already had 20 intros where people have gone, how does this not make the top 10? The reality <laughs> is, exactly. we're, we're like nearly a decade into intros now. There's a lot of good ones out there, and they can't all make them. And I think the vast majority in this top 10, whether, you know, as unfortunate it is for some to miss out, I don't think you can make a real case against any of them. They're all top quality intros at the end of the day. Yeah, there's been so many talented creators by now that like 25 intros deserve top 10 placements at this point. So, give me that map to check out though. I mean, you can make it work. Yeah, just have three number 10s, you know. <laughs> All right, I guess we could uh, we could move on then to uh, yeah. talking about the the rest of the list. Talk about some um, notable intros. Uh, that appeared during the rest of the, the 100, be that for good reasons or bad reasons. Uh-huh. Or indeed ones that missed out that people think should have made it. Oh, mm -hmm. I got transition from saying that, like, if I thought Paradox 4 and Agency 12 shouldn't have been in the uh, top 10, I think the two that I would have bumped up would have been uh, Phobia 13 and then probably Quixotic 3. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I'm a sucker for that Quixotic 3 intro. 
Uh, that might be I think it got some serious recency bias in last year's top 100, and I think it's about where it should be now for me. Can I yeah, I, I like it, but it's definitely not a it's definitely not a top five intro like it was before. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not top five. No, but I would definitely say top 15 in my opinion. I think it is one of the queenest electronic based intros that we have ever seen. Which one? Um, can I green? ask a question, please? Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so maybe I just haven't paid enough attention. Um, but uh, in the top 100 UHC uh, document that I'm looking at here, there were four honorable, honorable mentions. Why just not get enough points? Or sorry, wait, what? Um, what's that? You? I lagged there, Joey. What was your question? Because I didn't <laughs> on the out. doc, yeah. there were four honorable mentions that don't have any points. Why are they honorable? Honorable mentions? Did they just not get enough points? Or... Um... So, uh, when when Key was making the video the night before, he messaged me and said, like, in previous years, we've already had on mentions as I'm making the video, and I don't, and I make intros myself, and I don't want to be biased. Could you um, come up with a couple for me? And short answer is, these are the four which I, <laughs> which I personally thought should be there. Um, modified one was in a hundred and first place. It tied on points with Bacon Crafty F30 and missed out based on the other tiebreakers, so that's why that one uh, got in. Um, simple math. As for the other three, I think we can all agree Astrology 2. Yeah, why why didn't Astrology make it? List. Literally don't know. I think Astrology 2, if I remember correctly, got 34 points, and the lowest one which made the list was Bacon Crafty, which got 39, so it was about yeah, five um, points off making the list. I found the full standings, so... Yeah, as you said, Modified 1 was 101, Around the World 3 was 102, Fission 3 was 104, and Astrology 2 was 108. Yeah, so they were all close, but those are my favourites of the ones that were, uh, that were close. I notice, uh, who's the person that makes the Astrology intros? Winter, I think their name is? Yes. Them? Yes. Yeah, their animations are really good. My only Super issue good. is their intros. So actually, uh, it's actually literally just their rig. I don't like the eyes on their rig. I think their players, like the actual players themselves, look really strange. That is my single issue with Winter's intros. Um, and you, they consistently use the same rig. I don't know why their intros don't like go higher, though. I think they're really, really, really good. Like Crossing Season 9. Two didn't even make the top 100 is unbelievably criminal. Yeah, it kind of is. Like, that's, like, easily top 50 material. Easily. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's one of the reasons I asked about because I was like, wait, Astrology 2, I remember that one being really good. How is that not in the top 100 yeah, at all? I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, oh, the, it's, it's kind of the unfortunate thing when you have just people voting on stuff is people are always going to forget things. And yeah. even, like, really good intros, you just have, like, a bunch of people just forget that I it happened. Astrology 2 was just overshadowed by Winter's other intros. Was it just their intros not... are all incredible, but they're all very similar in the animated style. That like it's like, yeah, they're all probably top fifty. But when people are voting for them, it's like, well, should I? Am I actually just gonna vote for all four or five or however many Winter made? When it's like maybe I'll just like pick one or two of them to put in my top thirty to submit. Mm -hmm. And astrology. Probably just that one that was left to the wayside, even if it's very well deserving of top 50, if probably even top 30. Yeah. I think also, I think also the case with like a probably the crossing one in particular is just people being unfamiliar with crossing beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of being unfamiliar, Bacon Crafty a 30 being at number 100, that's another one that uh, should have been much higher, in my opinion. Yeah, that was, that was my first time seeing it. And I was like, "Damn, it's really good." Shame it's one hundred. Yeah, and I could have That's straight right. up, I could have straight up not been here if a tiebreaker went a different way. Yeah, um, I just think people's people's attitudes towards non Reddit recorded rounds really um shone during the premiere for me. Like having already gone past like some of the calamity intros where people are like, "Oh my god, how did these get?" Um, People are like number twenty six, crossing season nine, and the comments are like, "Uh, what the fuck is this?" And then it starts, and everyone, "Oh wait, shit, this is actually good." Like, people need to give stuff a chance. Not every mm -hmm. intro you haven't heard of is boosting. And what was that French one as well? Um, oh yeah, uh, modded, modded again. People are like, "What the fuck is this?" And then it's like, "Oh wait, this actually should be a lot higher than number ninety in in reality." So I think people people need to give other stuff a chance sometimes. <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely. That being said, though, the Calamity ones, uh... <laughs> I think pe people people should give non Reddit entries a chance, but I think they should give the good ones a chance. <laughs> and uh, I'm not treading new ground here when I say that uh, the calamity intros are definitely not top fifty. No, definitely not. Yeah. I, just, I agree. Nah. It's like um, people were people were being very. Um, probably rightfully so judgmental about the calamity placements in the in the comments and then you have obsidian mind man being like come on guys this is my first intro I don't shit on my work and it's like we're not saying it's a bad intro but come on look at the ones it's finished it's above. like, it's like seriously if, try if, and claim if, it should be if where it people is. are complaining about the intro being placed here you're not saying the intro is bad they're saying the intro isn't the like the 40th greatest intro of all time that's hardly an insult <laughs> It's like it's like calling Phenom's worst intro Phenom's worst intro. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, kind of I... a. It's not really an insult. Calamity intros are just. I think they're generic, and I also. I'm I'm gonna say something here. Um, I love the guy. I think he's really cool. But I have literally no clue how uh, geology is as high as it got. Which I think was uh, I, it geology was like 20, five. Yeah, geology five was twenty seven. Probably I, one of my least favorite intros I, of all time. I really don't think it's very good. Higgy's a great guy. I get like love Higgy's a funny guy and everything, but this intro it has like a little opening sequence that lasts forty seconds long. Literally and, makes me want to cry. And the intro is a minute and fourteen, by the way. And then it should I think it's supposed to be like a, a, a like a a throwback to the other geology intros, but the other geology intros were really bad. Um, so thanks a lot, by the way. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> wait, wait, did Joey make one? Yeah, it's my worst intro. You have four. Oh, you have four. You have four. I'm sorry. 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 i yeah, I don't, I don't know geology five by size. I did. It's nothing personal to the creator judging the product itself. I don't think it's very good. The song is whatever. The opening sequence is way too long, and it's not even that unique. And then it just renders with like really low quality text and really yep. blurry and uninteresting backgrounds. I maybe if this was like, I think maybe it was like the eighties or nineties. I think I'd be like cool yeah, with it. Yeah, I would argue maybe in the seventies would be fine. But like twenty-seven. <laughs> yeah, is a that's what much. I'm. That's why it caught my interest. It was like you know I'm not gonna judge the intros. Like I'm not gonna judge, um, you know, X Files season one. I'm not gonna judge that. Sorry, Jake. I'm not gonna judge that. But this this intro should not be as high as it did. I think a lot of other intros are better, including like Around the World season three. Like that intro is better. Yeah. Yeah, X-Files is exactly where it should be if you've, if it was even deserving of the top 100 at all, to be honest. I kind of forgot. Was it the one with the lightning? Uh, yeah, it was the one with the oh, triangles. okay. Yeah, well, yeah, gotcha. For me to triangles. I'm not, I, it's one of the intros that I've personally has degraded the most over the year since I have made it. I don't mind it, but I don't think, I think it's a little, like, I, I don't think it's one of your best intros. No, not at all. But I don't think it's bad. Jake, I do want to give you a shout out though for getting four interests in the top fifty. I think that's well deserved. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, what was it Survivor season four, number twenty two? That's my highest ranking ever. So that's good. It's very good ranking. Uh, hey. Like three, year the first three years, I didn't get a single intro in the top one hundred. To now have eight in the top one hundred overall, four in the top fifty. I'd say that's like some solid improvement. Jake, I'm really surprised that that's true. Than anyone. That's why you were invited today. Neat. <laughs> yes, you have more than anyone. Look at the stats. What statistics? Oh, yeah, you, you, got, you have the most. I, I have made some bad intros in my time. I have also made some very bad intros in my time. But that comes with just being around for a while. I do think that like, overall, though, like my best intros did rank the highest. Like My personal top five are Survivor 4, Evo 20, uh, 
Agency 10, TT20, and uh, Survivor 3. Survivor 3 didn't make the list, but... Um, like, the fact that Survivor 4 and Evo 20 are the two highest ranking on this list is made me happy. I was a little sad to see how far uh, Agency 10 dropped, because I'm still really high on it. It dropped 39 spots. Um, but whatever, I guess. Still on the list, I can't be yeah, too I think, that, I think that's one of the biggest... I think that's one of the biggest drops. I think um, that's a good time to bring on... We might as well discuss it, as it's quite relevant. The, the biggest drop was uh, Addiction Season 10, an intro which I hate, which fell 74 spaces. That one hurts. That one hurts a lot. Um, I have to look at it. Is that the one that is very similar to the recovery intro that Gus made? The, the one with yeah. the, the squares and circles. Yes, yeah. okay, so that's just like the recovery intro. Guys. I love this intro. Um, if I remember correctly, I I do like that intro a lot. Where is it? Yeah, I voted it? for it at, like, I think my number six spot. It is a uh, 96th. Really? Oh my god, I was looking in the 70s. Yeah, it's number 96. That's, is that's just... not fair. This intro is way better than that. People are telling, based off the voting, I'm going to until the geology is better than Addiction Season 10. That's kind of, it's kind of strange. But then what above Addiction Season 10 is an intro, which is much better. Boats. What's above it? New Dawn, oh, New Dawn Season 12. Right? Yeah. I think that, that intro is much better than the Addiction one. Yo, New Dawn Season 12 is really good. Why did it play so low? I, guess, uh, I, don't know. I remember that, being, that. I remember that was a big vibe during like the first yeah, watch of this. Yeah, it's just twelve is an excellent intro. Oh uh, yeah, that was a big vibe oh, watching like the the live watch through was just like immediately the list starting. People like people like hitting intro after intro of like this is so low. What the hell? Yeah. Another big drop was the Survivor season two that fell fifty five. I think certain intro just kind of fell from just people kind of forgetting about them, nothing personal at all. It's just they're not relevant necessarily. Like that New Dawn intro, it's really good, but it, it's not exactly relevant. People might not think about it immediately, but it's like when I look at it and I watch it, I'm like, oh wow, this intro is really good. But if I was voting or something, I probably wouldn't include New Dawn because it's, it's kind of old and yeah. it's not an intro people necessarily always talk about it's just one of those intros that when people see they like go like oh that's really solid you know you only have to look at the percentage of new intros in the top 100 to see how short people's memory are sometimes yeah exactly exactly uh do we have room to like talk about intros that didn't make the list at all yeah, yeah we can probably uh, yeah. Yeah. okay there's just one intro I want to shout out because uh, this is totally nostalgic to play, by the way. Uh, but I have a real big fondness for Over the Limit 3. I don't know if anyone remembers that. Uh, uh, yeah. Can you link no, it in the Discord or uh, Twitch yeah. chat or something? Uh, it was high up. I think it was like number 11 or something on the first list. Uh, and it got like 92nd in 2017. So it doesn't surprise me that's this, that oh, it's out this of the list. Right. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. But I yeah, still have a fun story. It's a very funny story. I'll, I'll throw it in the Twitch chat. I was just searching YouTube for Minecraft UHC intros, and I just stumbled upon that one, and I was like, I'll submit it, why not? And then I ended up getting, like, really goddamn high. Mm -hmm. I love this one as, like, similar to, like, I mean, we said with the all one telling a story, this one kind of tells a story as well, because, like, it kind of, like, goes for the players and everything, and, like, it goes through the game of UHC in a way. It's really cool. I really like it. The animations yeah. are good, too. Mm -hmm. The actual, I like that intro, it's very solid. It's one of the best examples of like a Minecraft, um, like still in Minecraft kind of like text sort of intro. I've seen Cube do it, I've seen a lot of um, different. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite, it's quite popular among like, it's quite popular among like larger like YouTube communities mm -hmm. to just have my, like an uh, intro based purely within Minecraft almost. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Cube do, do, does it, Cube did it um, for one of their teeth, I forget which one. And it was okay, but I think this one's one of the best examples of it. I'm surprised it didn't make it, but people might also just not know the name of it. Like, if I was oh. trying to search for this intro, I wouldn't know how to, to be honest. Yeah, it took a long while for me to find it again, so... <laughs> Told me. Um, there's also just one fun coincidence I want to uh, bring up quickly. It's that three of the songs in the top 100 has, like, the same artist, like, a song from the same artist, uh, Saint Pepsi. I thought that was really uh, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. People like that artist a lot. 
yeah out of orbit restriction and one more i think yeah was, mm -hmm. uh, phobia i think it was uh, yeah that was really fun mm -hmm. if we're on the topic of songs real quick i just want to bring mention to dire Straits season one using stigmata by grandson uh -huh. because that's like that was one of my top three favorite songs of 2019 i absolutely adore stigmata as a song and then i saw that intro and to see one of my favorite songs of all time be used in an intro that i was very underwhelmed by was very painful for me to watch <laughs> <laughs> oh whoever is listening right shade. now it better not, not be the person who made that, that intro no, but like when i hold a song in such a high regard you know i kind of have this like this expectation of it to, like this yeah. expectation that, that sense, you can read when that song is used, which is why, like, I have trouble using some of my favorite songs ever in my projects. Like, I can't use a top 10 favorite song of all time in any of my videos because I'm never going to be able to live up to how good they actually are. So I have to dig through, like, maybe, maybe, like, the stuff that's, like, in the 20 to 30 range. Like, if I'm looking for, like, a montage or whatever. I actually totally get so what you're I, saying. Yeah. I can't I can actually hit that bar of, like, how good the song actually is and live up to it, you know? It's really tough to do that. I was having yeah. an issue with uh, the Bravely Default song I chose. Because I, I was trying to use that song for a very long time, um, and I was able to make something out of it, but it was hard because you have higher expectations for yourself when you realize the song you're working is so good. Totally, yeah. you want to live up to like the uh, like the place that that song is has in your heart, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah really, really stuff. Um, what other topics were there? Uh, uh, the one after so the topic after this one we're going to be discussing um, the short list. Which was a, a new thing for this top 100 process. Uh huh. Um, my first thoughts on it I, is I thought the shortlist idea was very good. It's just an uh, absolute shame you got so few people to work on it. Yeah. Okay. Do, do, you, want me to, do you want me to just do a little, little rundown little on this? Cause, yeah, this, yeah, this, this is all you. So. When like when it came to um, starting starting this top 100, like it was getting talked about in the R Discord quite a lot, and people were saying about like votes have been dwindling, not as many people have been doing it in recent years, and that was one of Key's uh, Key's big things that he was saying why he thought no one voted uh, last year. So something needed to be done to encourage people to vote again. Again. But the whole reason we were having this conversation was because nobody wanted to take on the project yet this year. And naturally, by default, any, any measure that you bring in to make things easier for the voters is going to make it more difficult for the person organizing it. So, so we've already got a project that no one wants to take on, and we're trying to make it more more challenging because I think the shortlist was probably the thing that took the most time out of any... Uh, individual part of the top 100 so i had to i had to make a decision on on how to approach the uh list and the first reason why we didn't have more people working on it is because more people didn't volunteer <laughs> we, i tagged every single intro person in the rr discord and three people replied and i took the help of the three people who responded to my message i don't know what more uh, I could have really done in that respect. And secondly, it's not like we were making our own our own list. It's not like we were creating a top 100 of our own. All we were doing was ironing out the intros, which were never going to get into the top 100 anyway. It was, I think, 25% of the intros that got nominated that we ended up um, ruling out. So a very small amount. I don't think you need a group of 10 people with daily meetings shared by me to determine the worst of the worst intros that were nominated. I don't think, I just don't think that was necessary to do. So I think if you weigh up the amount of time the project takes compared to how easy the task was, and then the fact that we also ran appeals for any absolute howls of decisions that we may or may not have made, I don't. I don't actually see anything wrong with with the um, how how I operated it, but I you guys are more. Well, it's definitely it's definitely not an issue to do with your method. The issue I have with have nothing to do with what you actually did yourself. I just think that it would have been nice if more people actually offered to do it. 
because I think yeah. I, I, I think it was the, the shortlist was good for mo- the most part. There was a few that kind of people kind of were a bit mad about, and I feel like if there's, there was just a bit more variety, like, I think if there was a bit more variety and a bit more people involved with it. I think you could have potentially even made the short like the short cut the shortlist even smaller. Because there were a hand few, there was like a handful of intros on the shortlist that got zero points. Yeah. So I, there's definitely um, a little, like, cut it a little Considering shorter. in Keys 1 last year, about half the intros got zero points, and on this year's it was 12. I think the I think the shortlist was quite successful mm. in that respect. Like, there's always going to be a handful that people forget about. Yeah. So, I'd, I don't know. I think... If it, like if you object to the um, shortlist idea, like completely, then like that's a perfectly respectable position to take. I just think the way like if you agree with it, the way we did it, I still I still defend. I don't think like like who did I have working on it? Sid, Change, and uh, Brady. Those guys know what they're talking about. Like it's not it's not it's not a lot of people but i think between the four of us i don't think we made any absolute cock-ups on ones to remove. yeah i mean it was difficult um very difficult position and i think ultimately uh, a lot of people just weren't like that invested into um like a significant amount of people probably think probably weren't that interested in trying to help with that so i think it's great with what you guys did with it um at least in my case to be completely honest um I just kind of had the, like, once I made the intros I made, I got kind of tired of making intros. Once you invest that much time into that sort of thing, um, it's just kind of hard not to do the motivation, especially because a lot of us, that was during a time, early 2020 is during a time where a lot of people just kind of stopped playing UHC. Um, so I think it's really awesome that you guys even got it out. I think the video came out really cool and the shortlist was fine. You guys didn't screw up anything. Um... You, there's always going to be small little mistakes that could have been helped if you had more people, if you had more time. But, you know, you can always go crazy over that kind of stuff. Like me with the All-Stars intro, I could always go crazy about, you know, I didn't polish this and that. But I think you guys did really good for what you had. No, I, I appreciate that. Also, I want to say any anything, any issue that you can take with the way we did the shortlist, you can rebuttal by saying there was an appeals process. So it was completely un- there was no, it wasn't a definitive thing. If we did make a mistake, anyone was more than welcome uh, to message us about it. And I think there was, I think there were four intros in the end that we uh, reinstated to the list because people people asked for them to be reinstated. I think maybe, I think maybe one of them ended up making the top one hundred and the rest didn't. So, and if I hear one more person say, "Wait, there was an appeals process," I might just throw my TV out the window. <laughs> Wait, there was an appeals process. There we go. TV's right. gone. It's going. It's gone. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you know, I try. I try. I really hate getting beefy over this like thing because no, the seriously, there wasn't a the post process. Project, but I said it eight times in the RR Discord and on the voting post itself. If at that stage, if you didn't know. That there was an appeals process. That is your fault and not mine. I I cannot be clear about this. It was doing my head in by the end. Especially, it was very especially surprising in the RR Discord seeing the amount of times you mentioned the appeals process, and then you also mentioned that some of the rounds they were mentioning just never got appealed. Yeah, I know. Like I said, like Wait. even like Skylord commented on the post saying like why was addiction 12 or 10 or whatever the hell it was removed i replied to the comment saying dm me and we can discuss it being reinstated if you want i never got a dm like (laughs) 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 um i mean he said wasn't it like he said i just don't i just didn't care about it and i didn't think anyone i thought i was in the minority and other people wouldn't um agree which is fair enough but i think that was probably i think that was the only intro that we removed that i would admit in hindsight that i removed or we removed out of personal distaste for and hence why in that scenario having more people involved in the project might have been beneficial Mm -hmm. but i think the rest of the intro is we removed really just were never going to make the top 100 like how much like how long was it between like the first time people started like saying like why wasn't incognito there before this before someone actually submitted like someone actually submitted an approval to get it back on 
Like, it felt like it was, like, a, a, like over a week, like, two weeks between people actually kicking up a fuss about Incognito and actually getting back on because someone appealed it. Yeah, there was there was a discussion in the R Discord where I was getting annoyed at people for not listening to me, and then Noah told me to calm down whilst ignoring the fact that I said he could appeal Incognito if if he wanted to. Like the irony was just huge, and in the end, it got a fit. I don't know where did where did Incognito end up. Uh, it, it wasn't on the list. It definitely wasn't on the fi final hundred. It was. Uh, it was. It got. It came. It, it came in two hundred and twenty seventh place with seven <laughs> points. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> the other one, Casino Season Three, finished in two hundred and fifty first with zero points. It seems to me like you guys just had like kind of a vocal minority trying to advocate for mm -hmm. Incognito. Now. Uh, I mean, no t shirt t no Tino Shade. I love the guys, but that was just Noah and Lewis saying why aren't Lewis's intros on here. I think Lewis is a very creative guy, but I don't think those two intros would have ever made the top 100. Other people may disagree, but I I don't I don't see it personally. I, think I saw them. They were kind of they were okay. Like not, I've only seen the Incognito one. I think I've seen uh, so, Lewis do some really cool things. So I don't know if you guys are on the dock. Um, I think I think most of you are. There's five yeah. people on it. So on the uh, if, if someone wants to link the dock in the uh, stream chat as well for for anyone watching who doesn't want to. Being oh, completely left out of this uh, conversation. Obviously, the second. different the different levels of the um, red is how likely you were to get a successful appeal. Basically, any that is in the dark red was an intro that was previously nominated for a previous top one hundred and received either zero points or like you know five or six, and basically had no chance of making the list. Whereas the ones in the lighter shades of red, I was more likely to you know, be a little bit more lenient on. And then you've got Fission versus Evolution and Pathfinder Season 1 where I was just waiting for someone to say something because I really didn't want those intros to be removed. But I think the other, hey, um, the other Owen. guys Owen. fit them up. Hello. Can you, uh, can you reinstate Pathfinder 1? I think it's a bit late for that now, buddy. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> next but, uh, year. Yeah, but like, I'm asking you, you're waiting you, 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 for someone to ask you, so I'm asking. The, the appeals process ended six weeks ago. Can we just get Kanako to remake the entire video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, num the number zero is Pathfinder 1. <laughs> Congratulations. What was that intro that they were all I'm memeing about in the chat for the entire premiere where they were like, this is going to be number one? Does anyone remember what Oh, I, yeah, I remember that happening. I can't remember the life member what it was. Oh, shit, what was it? Oh, what was it? Someone, ah, oh, someone, someone, um, please. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna go crazy. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna go um, bad. While you try to think of that, uh, I just, just want to say quickly about the shortlist idea. Is that th there had to be a shade of some kind, because there's just a too huge a barrier of entry to expect mm -hmm. people to watch like 300 plus intros to make an informed opinion. Uh, on that, so I think it was important that something changed this year for sure, uh, and you can see that 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 there were not a lot of votes this year either, and that just shows that how imp how vital that something needs to change uh, about this process. One one other thing I just want to add um, with with the um, shortlist and something that people need to think about. Um, there were a lot of people saying that because um, we only removed what was it like like. Uh, like 97 intros in the end uh in the grand scheme of things compared to how many intros were nominated it wasn't that big of an amount and hence i don't think anyone was gonna not vote as a result of those 97 intros all i would say that people haven't thought about is i think the existence of the appeals process meant people were a little bit more selective about what they nominated I think normally people would just nominate any old thing oh we might as well see what happens whereas knowing that there's an appeals process, people were more inclined to think, oh, well, that's definitely not going to make the shortlist, so I'm not going to bother nominating it. So I think if there was no appeals process, we would have got a lot more than the 342 submissions that we got, and we would have ended up more, like, you know, 400, 500 like we had mm -hmm. last year. I think people people forget. I think people forget that. I have always only ever nominated intros of my own that I believe deserved the top 100, and then a bunch of other people would nominate intros of mine that 
were probably never going to make the top 100 and probably didn't. So I definitely, I, I that's all I have to add on the sentiment of the shortlist, really. Uh, this sounds uh, cocky, but I uh, didn't really need to nominate my own intros. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, completely fair. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, I fa- it was uh, comical season one. That was ah, the that was the that was the funny of the day. Yeah, it was. I was I don't know what comical is, but I just why was it the it funny of the day? I think I missed the premiere. I think because I think at some point during the voting process, uh, O Dog or Key let it slip that comical season one had received like numerous first place picks. And everyone was like, oh no, it's going to get boosted, it's going to go high up. And then the further through the top 100 we get, and Comical didn't appear, people were like going, oh god, oh. Comical's oh. top 20, oh god, Comical's <laughs> top 10. Uh, number I, one? That's, that's, not, that's not true. Um, Key had no access to the dock at this point, and the intro that I was worried about people boosting were the Calamity intros, and I think everyone can agree that that fear ended up coming to fruition. So I, I, I did not mention Comical Season 1 once during the making. I definitely of, remember uh, someone in the uh, Discord mentioning that. Yeah, that was and not if me. It, and if it wasn't you, then I'm like, did someone, like, manufacture fear? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. I know they were talking about Comical, but I never saw Comical mentioned except for the time where they're like, where's Comical? I'm trying, I'm trying to see if someone, like, like it's, if someone genuinely like manufactured this fear from the list. Um, while well, while Dom looks for that, I think um it's kind of a kind of been established that whoever is taking the time to make the top one hundred kind of gets to decide the rules for their list. That's why uh, Key had the removing the um previous winners. I decided to bring that back because I didn't personally like it. All up to opinion. Do you guys have any thoughts about the future? of the top 100 because like Sid said the the votes were better this year but they weren't great so something else probably needs to change do you guys have any thoughts um, as to what as to what that would be wait so, wait what do, you, what do you mean by the previous winners because Great Frontier was on there and it won, won number one for one point no 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 so last year for uh-huh. Key's top 100 uh, oh, the yeah, yeah. previous winners at that point weren't allowed to feature so oh. R&R, so R&R, Remarkable, New Dawn and AP10 were not eligible I decided um, to bring that back this year because I didn't like it so yeah um, I, I agree with you I think it the it feels kind of uh, unfair I guess when you say like oh these are the top 100 intros in the amount that's there like it should just be overall like the top 100 intros not this little um thing like oh well the previous winners aren't here therefore you know you might not be the top intro i think it makes it a lot more interesting when it's the whole roster there because then you, you get the big boys you get the new ones you also get to see how our, our intros have changed when you include the winners and past ones i don't know i i, I I that's think. always been yeah. that's always been my logic is I love the fact of the top 100 that it's not just the top 100 intros of that year it's the top 100 intros yeah, exactly time for that year so part of the fun is seeing how the winners of former years yeah. stack up yeah. against newer intros and if you ban the number ones from competing and then it kind of makes it, it, it is, like i said it doesn't make it as special when you're like well it's only these intros that you're competing against because the actual real competitors you're not even competing against them like that just feels kind of uh kind of like a cop out i don't know i, like, I prefer I've... it feels way more rewarding when you know it's the whole avenue of intros out of every good intro like i think there's every chance that r and r7 would have won last year if it was eligible over tgf 7a and that will always leave a slightly sour taste of knowing well did did the intro that i organized just win because the ones that came in first before it weren't eligible like i want to i want to see it stack up against uh the winners of old yeah. and it would don't get me wrong it was nice to see tgf still uh come out the highest out of the um five former winners but last year um it was a nice. I, I I understood where Key was coming from. I I, I do, but I personally. I, yeah. Have it I mean, I I way. get what Key was like, what his intention was, and it was to just to make you know it of the year as opposed to all of the years combined. 
But to the people that actually win the number one spot, it feels less rewarding because your intro isn't being competed with, you know, the biggest competitor, which would be the winner of the last year, essentially the old champion. You're, because like, they're being, uh, they're not included. So, I, I like this version way more, where you have, uh, everyone involved. That being said, ironically, I would say that, um, for the sake of other years actually being worth watching, Key's idea might be worth coming back because I can't see All Stars Five not winning every single year for the rest of <laughs> time. unless someone makes like a absolutely nutty, ridiculous intro in twenty twenty one. The thing that would really motivate me to make a, another intro would be if someone outdid All Stars. But right now I'm working on another intro and it's. It might beat All Stars, so I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the reign of terror continues. Is this the one that you've talked to me about, Phenom? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. I I can't confirm or deny because it's been a while since he's shown me yeah, anything. Yeah, it, it has. And it's also been a while since I worked on it. But <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm waiting, but it'll come out probably. I I, I think it'll definitely come out in 2021. So. Uh, just to toss an idea out there, is there any um, basis for making it a top 50 of the year rather than a top 100 of all time as of that that year? I don't think it's a bad idea, but it depends on how many intros you get for the year. Um, yeah. If you have like a full, let's say the year just explodes and you have like 200, 150 intros from that single year that came out, then yeah, top 50 is totally fair. But if like you have a total of 100 intros and you make, or maybe like a total of 70 intros and you're making a top 50 out of that, that's, that's mean much. Yeah, you, you, you reach, reach a point where it's just like, you'll have just like the low level intros are just kind of meh. Yeah. And it's just, it doesn't feel like a great list. And then, like the first top ten is really the only ones actually worth watching. Yeah. Uh. Well, I've got to go, guys. So I don't know if there's anything else you're gonna do on this uh, on this uh, podcast. But I think the only other discussion I would uh, want to have would be to mention my idea on why our intros should not have renders. Ooh. But um, basically, like. When you're watching like a Netflix show or something like that, you get like a little, you get like a two minute teaser of like what the episode is going to be about. And then you get like a 10 second intro of like credits, logo, bam, you're into the episode. Uh -huh. So why don't Reddit intros do that? I think it's almost like renders in an intro are so much of a norm that it's like going away from that feels risky. But I feel like uh, people just put renders in because it's like oh that's the formula like you need to show the players in the intro whereas for the most part when you're watching a recorded round generally you when you're going to watch the episode you already have a perspective you're going to watch um i just don't feel like there's much value in showcasing the players in an intro at this point outside of specific circumstances um I know we were talking about this before, but I think ultimately our R intros still contribute like a lot though. I, I think for people, there's a lot of rounds that come out and they don't really want to worry about the production aspect. So I think people like that or people or rounds which want to do that, they should just be able to make what you're saying, like a very mm -hmm. relaxed, chill intro. So they're, they're not in production hell trying to find an intro maker. Mm -hmm. But I think rounds like Paradox, which really pride themselves in their production, should continue making those intros and continue mm -hmm. putting that much effort because their intros are different and that's what they're aiming for same thing yeah. with like out of orbit out of orbit would be a mm -hmm. lot less interesting with their intros same thing definitely, with remarkable definitely. same with phobia it was a lot of those people who a lot of those rounds which really pride themselves in their intros those need to be there that's so important for mm -hmm. the, the, the what they're trying to go for but a lot of other rounds which are more there for just like pvp and just to kind of get a season out sometimes to be frank with you those rounds shouldn't have to worry about that. They should just be able to make a very simple kind of intro, like you said. And the I recorded round should... aren't necessary. If you're trying to market a recorded round as an entertaining game of UHC, the focus should be on making the game entertaining rather than making the intro to the game the focal point. Yeah. 
So that's why I think, I think there's... like a quick 10 second intro with just like credits logo, bam, you're into the episode. I think there's there's one aspect of um the release of a UHC which I think which I think contributes to the need for people to have these the player lists and renders. And that's the episode and that is the intro post. Mm. I feel like the kind of the schedule you go for is when you're releasing a round, you might have a trailer, you release your trailer, and then like a day or two later you release your intro. And then a day or two later, you release your episode one. And I think the requirement, because at this point, people just function off of, oh yeah, here's the intro post. The requirement of having that intro post makes you use it as a like a marker for like, this is where we introduce the public to who played. Mm-hmm. When if you, if you cut that step out completely, and the intro just becomes a part of the episode one, then the episode one itself already does the job of introducing who's playing, so you don't need to bake it so deeply into the intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think, think it's, that's it's just, what it's I just, might do for Pathfinder from now on. Yeah, it's just become such a. Posts. It's just become so like deeply ingrained in like how people release UHC that mm-hmm. it's everything kind of caters to that release, and mm-hmm. I think if you do things a little differently, you can you can skip out on stuff like that. Which might I just wanted I just wanted to throw it out there because I definitely think there are situations where it would be more fitting. Than I, w- I would do I would like to trailer. see I would like to see in twenty twenty one people experiment like, more with that. That memories. is something that I would I would love to do an intro without renders or players. Like my my motivation for intros is kind of dead because I was basically working on intros the entirety of the year last year. Like I would finish an intro and I would have like one on deck pretty much every time. Yeah, I remember. Um, so like. It, my motivation is like done but if i was able to do something new where it's like i get to focus on cool effects of like introducing the text and the credits like i feel like instead of focusing on a formula for how to showcase the players in a cool unique way i i could do just a lot more creativity with just a different style that didn't focus on players and i feel like that would give me motivation to actually want to make another intro at this point well maybe we can talk more about that some other time yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that up briefly. It's something that I've kind of been mm-hmm. wanting to say for a while, but mm-hmm. uh, don't really have the platform to, I feel like, so. Because it has been kind of... It, it doesn't necessarily just specifically relate to kind of renders and intros, but I've enjoyed seeing people experiment with round releasing, and uh, rather than just being like, oh yeah, here's the intro post, here's the ep one, two days, we got ep two, uh, 20 minute episode, all that, ep six meetup, just seeing people kind of experiment and try different things and make the releasing more interesting. And I think that, again, I think the, the production of intros ties heavily into how people are used to releasing things. So it'd be interesting to see people break from the mold a little more, experiment, yeah. come up with uh, new ideas. It, it, might be, it, I, might, it might be the way forward, and we don't know, because we're just doing this, the I same just thing. I feel like there's a lot of rounds which really just lack passion you can tell they kind of just play it just to play it um and i think those rounds production is just another thing that's like halting them from having like yeah. a good time playing all uhc a lot of people play these, pri- these UHCs like you know it's like a private game to talk to hit friends and then upload and then you just th- then you go to the next season um they're not trying to build a lore they're not trying to they don't really care that much about the production aspect so they kind of just either pay people or ask people and they basically just do it all for them um, those rounds should really just do more like what Jake is saying. It'd be a lot easier for them, and the production aspect would be a lot better. You obviously have to find, like, a clean way of doing it, but it doesn't need to be anything too hard. There's a logo that, like, glows or something, or, you know, something like that. I also that. think, uh, different. logos are definitely, uh, the trend of having, like, an artistic logo in a round is something that I think was a good step. But I feel like it's almost just like a lock for like, if you don't have a logo for your round, you're doing it wrong at this point. And I feel like it's almost limiting to like, you have to have an artistic logo. I get that. But at the same time, logos are serve a purpose. They're not just yeah. meant to be some like mm-hmm. little knickknack. Um, oh, look at my round. It's supposed to be like, you know, this does in fact represent your round. It's like a yeah. name tag. You can call a mm-hmm. name tag represents like limiting and i guess that's true but i just do feel like a lot of uh logos come off in like the same style then again I, the same people keep making them so like yeah what yeah, am i to say true, but um yeah i don't know I, that's and kind logos of that's kind also of reach the point where they are um 
they're done. A lot of logos are done by Sam. I don't really make logos. I rarely make logos. But typically either Sam or I. And because of that, I imagine Sam has been getting pretty tired of making logos, so they also end up looking kind of samey. I call it the render maker effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm kind of tired of it. That, that's the issue with also having rounds all the time with people. Because what the thing is, is that, I'm going to be honest, those people that organize the rounds, they're not the ones doing the, like, the production aspect, which is an entirely different monster themselves. They very rarely do the production aspect. These people just tell other intro makers or other, you know, people who they know make renders or make intros to do it for them. And that's a lot of work for the people who make the intros, make the renders. Um, it's also a lot of people they need to refuse. And I'm saying this from someone who has directly dealt with this. Um, that's why, you know, again, I agree with Jake that certain rounds should just go for a more simple aspect. If you're not trying to wow people with the production aspect, then just don't don't bother like spending that much time render makers are burnt out anyway yeah so like it's it's just the permanent cycle that render makers go through it's just yeah. uh -huh. you, you make your first render you enjoy making renders you make like 10 batches of renders now you don't enjoy making renders anymore yeah exactly just kind of overworking mm-hmm um I think that, is that everything though? I think we we've mentioned yeah. the topic. Yeah, I think so. Um, at this point, uh, I think usually at this point we do like a we do like a all Q and A, ask some get some questions from chat. Uh, I think I don't know. I think a few people have dipped off since the the start of the stream, so I don't know if there's a lot of people here for a Q and A. But um, I'll leave you it for could both. Like ping the Discord or something. So I'll, just, yeah. I'll, I'll slap a message in the uh, the podcast channel. <laughs> I think we've been talking for pretty long. No. That's what happens when you have Jake and I do. <laughs> I, I'm used to three hour podcasts. The, the hive mind has prepared me for this moment. I, I've had to uh, do quite a bit of editing to some of the podcasts. There was one episode where we went for three hours and 20 minutes. Oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah. We've had a, I think we've had at least like one podcast, like our podcast goes to a similar length. And that was quite something at least i think i've uploaded on my channel yeah we had oh yeah we had the the paradox episode with three and a half hours i forgot yeah. about that <laughs> a lot of lore to explain i suppose yeah that was a that was a very deep episode and then even like the the one with just that talked about round production went two and a half hours at least to be fair this one's gone about this one's gone about two and a half now so yeah it's better than paradox at least yeah, I mean, to sit here I think for three I hours. think we're like we can stick around if there is a few Q and A questions. You answer that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think yeah, we're good. We've done our talking on the top one hundred intros. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm, I'll be, I'm going to use this time to quickly kind of give um, just a quick overview of the podcast plans going forward. Um, I think as I think Odog mentioned the Discord either today or the last couple of days. Uh, we're going to try and organize another episode um, soonish, one that will be actually geared around releases and rounds that released. I did, I said I'd do that a couple months ago and it didn't happen, but hopefully this time it actually will happen. Um, also, I'm taking, I'm taking initiative right now on the 2020 RR Awards. Um, I'm getting together a, a committee of helpers to help create the documents related to that, and hopefully that'll be able to come out within the next few weeks, for the voting process for that. Maybe the committee will also have a part in the roundup of the rounds that happened over the 2020, we'll do a podcast on that, you know. Just uh, got some stuff in the works, pretty much. Um, I know people were really excited when I hinted that t -Fur might be on the podcast. Um, sorry to keep y'all waiting. <laughs> No, just how excited you are to hear T Firm on the podcast, but it was just too in intimidating a prospect. I'm I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm just so excited. It's gonna be a, a real delight. Really, can't hold my excitement in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know it's, it's um I think it's coming up on half past now, so I think I think if people if there's no if there's no questions, I think we'll just uh we'll just go. For the wrap up here, we'll end things off. So um, uh, I'm just gonna give some thanks. First of all, thanks to the late O Dog uh, for being here. 
Play sad we could, sad we could, he couldn't be us for the whole way. Rest his soul. Um, also, thanks to Joey for being here as, as, hey, one, of the, as one of the, the regulars that shows up. And so I'm also, not talking much towards the end. That's all good, man. Uh, and then also, thank you to the guests. Thank you to Jake Fedham and Sid for being here to talk about intros. It's been, yeah. it's been a pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for having me. It's a Thank great you. conversation. If there's, one area, the if there's one area of Recorder Grounds that I can confidently talk about, it is the intros. So, Yep, same. I do not watch anything, but I do. I watch my own Recorder Rounds because I have to highlight them. Yeah, that's but, uh, pretty true. That's it. I, can, I mean, I, I remember one time said, uh, Wizard told me, hey, you highlight your episodes pretty good. I was like, oh, that's funny, because I kind of just cut between it and then use the scissor tool, and I don't watch any of it. <laughs> uh, but I'm <laughs> glad <laughs> you think it's entertaining. The audio form here is low. Snip. <laughs> <laughs> that's the plan. All right, okay, in that case, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, catch yep. it a podcast in the p- coming weeks, maybe. Or who knows, it could be three months. I don't fucking know anymore. <laughs> All right, catch y'all oh, later. Whoa. 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 Bye. I'm going to slap end Bye. stream. Everything's going to shut the